Hello and welcome to the UCI BMX Racing World Cup from Papendal in the Netherlands. With me, Matt Payne. And me, Rich Eames. We're here in what is a fantastic venue. The word iconic gets banded about plenty, but this is the real deal. And Rich, you spent a bit of time at this track. Yeah, absolutely. First came here in 2011 for the inaugural World Cup here at Papendal, and what a memorable weekend that was. And it's turned into a really, like say, iconic venue on the World Cup circuit, a bit like an Old Trafford or a Bernabeu Stadium. Oh, the football fans amongst us will instantly uh, recognise that. And for those that don't, just think it's amazing. OK, let's have a little look in the area out and around Papendal. So here in Papendal, we are in Arnhem in the Netherlands. It's home of uh, the Olympic uh, Training Centre. And in and around the area, all of those archetypal windmills, great scenery and some amazing museums, including uh, the Airborne Museum, commemorating uh, Operation Market Garden. Plenty of retail therapy, and if that's not enough, well, you can relax and enjoy what it is, some fantastic scenery. But don't forget to just pack your bike shoes, make sure you've got yourself your dancing shoes, because if you're like Rich, you can dance like your dad in the festival afterwards as well. How very dare you say I'm a dad dancer, Matt. But uh, yes, I actually am. But we're in uh, sunny Papandal. It's 24 degrees, so balmy and warm. Just an eight kilometer an hour wind. Just enough to take the edge off it. And it's beautifully sunny. It is absolutely scorching. And uh, I have to say, it is drying out incredibly quick. Now, this is round three of the series. And of course, that means we've had rounds one and two. And the riders scoring points in all of the rounds. And they add up to their points total. So let's take a little look here. Whilst we are in Papandel at the standings, the women's under 23 headed by Tessa Martinez. And currently 110 points clear at the top from Zoe Hapka. So a very fast start to the series for Tessa Martinez in that women's under 23 competition. Yeah, moving on to the men under 23, Rico Beerman, by courtesy of those two wins in round one and two, heading out the standings. Hugo Marslek in there in two, Philip Steiner, rounding out the top three, Noisel in four, Cole in five, Nordam in six, Callum Russell of Great Britain in seven, and Marco Radielli in eight. So those are the men's under 23 rankings. Let's uh, take a, a little uh, look across at our elite standings. The women's elite, well, no surprises. Perfect score there for uh, Beth Shriver ahead of Elise Willoughby. Interesting to see that Smothers, Laura Smothers in fourth position. Will it be a day to rank some more points in? Well, we will see. Don't forget, of course, we have our men's standings as well, Rich. Yeah, Roman May out front on that 930 points, chased down by his compatriot Yoris Dilde, who's not that far behind. Diego Abeleda rounding out the top three. Isaac Kennedy of Australia in four. Nick Kimmon, the home favourite here at Papendal, he rounds out the top five. Well, we've said that the weather is absolutely scorching. Let's have a look at who is scorching the track in rounds of one and two. Yeah, rounds one and two out in Sakurai in Turkey. And it was Tessa Martinez in the women under 23 category. She was all smiles on the podium at the end of the day. Uh, we're taking on those two wins. And in the men under 23, it was double trouble, but it was Rico Beerman who was uh, dishing out all the trouble as amid the podium selfies. And uh, Bethany Shriver of Great Britain, she started a World Cup campaign in the perfect fashion taking those uh, two victories and perfect points. So podium himself is definitely becoming a thing as we move on to the elite men category. Arbolader with a really good early start, but it was Roman May of France who was out there in front and he took that win in round number one. He's already won here as well in Papendal, so he'll be looking to make the most of his experience on this track. But day two on the inside there, you have Yoris Dode of France and he led his countryman into the turn, couldn't quite get past him and it was Yoris taking his win and looking real good in the process. So that was rounds one and two, but we're on to round number three. Any shocks so far? Any surprises? Well, there's a couple of uh, people gone out early doors. Quillen Mizdor and Paddy Sharrock of Great Britain. Corbin Sherrard of the USA. Neither of them, or, and none of them, passed the eighth 
final stage. So, you know, but we're ready for some more hot race action here in a very warm and sunny Papendal. And you can see that even the uh, press and the uh, teams and the crews here all hatted up. Uh, lots of sun cream being applied and it is absolutely scorching out there for the uh, riders. Uh, up at the top of that start gate, Rich and I were up there earlier. Uh, it was uh, really interesting to see. Rich, take us uh, through our riders. Yep, yeah, there is Tessa Martinez, winner of round one and two of the series here. And uh, she'll be looking to add to her accounts. And there is Julia Buta of uh, Japan out there in lane number eight. She had third gate pick, but opted for lane eight on the outside. Maybe just wants to keep herself out of trouble a little bit. But we'll soon see in the first of the quarterfinals for the women under 23. So usual format here. Going through to the next round. Who's going to be in there? All tension at the top of the hill. About to be released. Right. And I think we're good to go. Okay, riders. Random start. Riders ready, watch the gate. And we are going with the first of the quarterfinals for the women under 23. Julia Buta on the outside, Tessa Martinez on the inside. Looking like she's going to pick up a whole shot. Those two riders are going to be one, two. I think that was single eye who took to the sky. Oh, big crash already in turn number one. Looks like one, two, three, at least four riders have gone down. No such problems for Tessa Martinez and Francesca Singolani. They're one and two at the moment, out front and clear, but all the action was in turn number one. It started a domino effect. Riders hitting the floor, and uh, we've only just got going, but the action has certainly hotted up. Looks like Tessa Martinez is going to bring it to the line, take the win in that women under 23 quarter final. Francesca Singolani in there in two, and that was Martinez, I think, of Colombia in three, but it all went down in turn number one. Well, it went down quite literally in turn number one, didn't it? And uh, we've just seen the riders making the way round to, to finish here in front of the huge crowds on the grandstand. But this is BMX racing and uh, hitting, tangling, tumbling is all part of the game. This, uh, I'm sure we're going to have a little look at that, Rich. It's uh, from the uh, top of that rock. It went off very quick. Yeah, it did. It did. It was very, uh, you know, nip and tuck going into the turn. It was uh, Martinez who looked good, and the rider who slid out. I've got a feeling that might have been uh, the uh, the rider from the uh, Slovenia. I think it was. He went down right there on the inside, took the wheel of the rider right next to him, which was Jimmy Abuto. She was minding her own business in third place and just ended up on the floor. So yeah, it was a Liska Barton Cove who started the chain reaction. No such problems for Tessa Martinez and Francesca Singolani. They're going through in one and two. Well, keeping out of trouble is absolutely key as the runners wait their turn to go send the 50 steps up to the start gates at the top. We know it's 50. Rich and I were up there uh, counting them as we went up. Used all our fingers and toes and a few more besides on the counting. It's a long way up there. So the results are in and confirmed. Martinez leading the riders through. We can see those big time gaps in there due to that crash and uh, they've got to pick themselves up a number of those riders are going to have to dust themselves down Rich yeah definitely You've, they've got another chance in round number four so that's it with BMX if you do have to have a crash there's always another race to get stuck into so whilst our race officials fix the uh, track our next uh, set of riders brought up to the gate the gate uh, releasing all of those riders simultaneously we're going to move on to uh, the second of our heat so uh, Let's see who is uh, going to be taking this out from the top. And it's intimidating. Stood at the uh, top of these riders, practice this time and time again. And they've been on site for quite a while, Rich, haven't they? Yeah, absolutely. They've put a lot of practice in. And we've got uh, Michel Wissinger, Mackenzie Gayhart, right there on the inside. Innes Clayson's there. And lane number three, Van Sanfort of the Netherlands. The lane four, Leila Henri, Robin Gomez, and Valerie Bosson, who has taken herself right out to the outside. Hopefully, she's going to keep herself out of trouble in this quarterfinal of women under 23. And remember, lane one or gate one is on our right, the riders left, so as we're looking up at the hillside. So the riders lined up and ready, they're going to be released. The racer referees, commissaires, are going to be setting the riders away once they're happy that all is good to go. Big team officials making sure everything runs to a plan. Yeah, and I've got my eye on Michel Bissinger and Mackenzie Gayhart. I think will be a battle on the inside going into that first turn. Great view of the uh, start hill and what the riders see. And it is a long way down that eight-metre start hill. And you're hitting 40 miles an hour at least by the time you get to the bottom of it. 
Okay, riders, yeah, random we start. Go. With quarterfinal. Riders two. ready, watch the gate. Quarterfinal two underway. Michel Dissing in the uh, resplendent orange of the Dutch army as we call them what riders already hitting the deck on that first straight but michel missing is leading it into the turn and his clayson's in there into kentigay hart working away into three valerie voss and i think has avoided the carnage and she's there in that fourth spot with van sanfort in five so michel missing opening up a lead now as they go into that second turn the battle is on for two three and four in his clayson's in the middle of it but here comes mackenzie gay hart on the inside the team usa rider looking for a way through and she's stolen it van sanfort trying to get in there as well and the belgian rider lining Herself up for a charge down the final string. Is she going to be picking up that fourth spot from Van Sanfort? Oh, he was close on the line. Clayson's Van Sanfort, Bossen, all mixed up in that one. And the question is, has Valerie Bossen done enough? And I don't think she has. Uh, it could be a quick out here as we go in through our quarter points. Let's have a little bit of a look back at that very shortly. So here we go, and uh, from the start, Rich, real incident, and uh, was it the rider mistake that caused this? I'm not quite sure what happened, it happened that fast, Matt, but we are about to find out. Oh, Van Sanfort just touching the rider next to it in the air, and that's what started the chain reaction. I think it was Leila Henri who ended up on the floor, so uh, her day ends early. But meanwhile, out in front, no such problems for Michelle Vissing. She'd checked out and gone. She'd got herself a you know, six or seven bike length lead at that point. Mackenzie Gayhart coming across in two, and I think Valerie Vossen left. It just a touch too late. Well, it was uh, certainly right down to the wire here. As you can see, the uh, clouds are just starting to form a little bit, which uh, will help the track a little bit. We need to see the race officials and the crews here. The fantastic Papandale BMX Club here. They've actually been watering the track. And that's not to get the grass to grow, is it? No, no, it's to keep the dust down and, uh, you know, just keep the track a little bit smoother for the riders. And uh, it can just help just, you know, increase a little bit of grip as well because it's, if it's very, very, very dusty, then it can be, you know, quite slippery in places. So, yeah, a little bit of water, you know, keep the dust down, keep everybody happy. And, uh, yeah, helps the racing progress nicely. Well, we're looking forward to more racing. Don't forget, of course, if you want to catch up on social media, you can do so at Facebook and Instagram on UCI BMX Racing. And you can catch up at UCI underscore BMX underscore Racing on Twitter as well. And for all the rules, you don't need to pick Richie's brains. You can get those at www.uci.org. Now, on to the next of our hits here in the Women's Top 3 quarterfinals. Yep, we've got Ava Corley in this one from the USA. And uh, Yvette Devard's in there as well. So uh, a real mixture of, uh, of riders. Uh, Sabina Kosakova also in the mix and Megan Williams of New Zealand. So the riders are lined and ready to go. We're keeping our eye on them. Fastest starter here, Rich, who's your money on? Um, I've got a feeling it's going to be Ava Corley of uh, Team USA who's going to show first as they go down that hill, but don't cut out Megan Williams from New Zealand out there on the outside. OK, riders, random start. Riders ready, watch the gate. So let's see if our prediction for this uh, third quarter final of Women's Under 23 is correct. It looks like Ava Corley of Team USA with a great start. Looks like she's going to pick up the whole shot into turn number one. Megan Williams settling into that two spot now. Oh, somebody's got the foot out old school style going round the turn. I've got a feeling that was Sabina Korsakova. But it is Corley and Williams battling into that second turn now. Williams is making a move. Corley pushes her up high. The Colombian uh, Carranza Lopez, she's in there in that third position. And Jodie Vimont, I think it is, of France in fourth. Four in and out of the final corner. Corley's hanging on to it. Williams looking safe into the Colombian, looking like she's going to pick up the three. Who's going to get that four spot as they get to the line? I think it was uh, Jordi Vimont of France who went through. We'll soon find out. Wow, that but was what action cracking. in there. Well, that was good money, but everyone stayed up right for uh, the first one of the uh, quarter fights. It's not often we can say that, and that is something that seems to be. Uh, becoming more and more prevalent isn't it uh, that uh, the uh, riders are, are pushing right to the limit and, and there's a lot at stake here and the crowds are treated some great action but there's a lot going on behind the scenes and a lot of pressure on the riders and that's translated in the racing yeah there's no quarter at store given at this level Matt not at all but Ava Corley of Team USA Megan Williams we picked those two out as the riders to watch in this quarter final and they certainly made it happen they were battling down that third straight Ava Corley just getting a 
cars out in front and uh, leading it into that final turn. And meanwhile, Yvette Devord of the Netherlands was working away into that uh, final qualifying position. The Colombian going through as well. That was Carranza Lopez. And uh, all smiles and Yvette Devord very happy as she crossed that finish line. So a three of our he's done. We have one more to go. So let's go to the results. So confirmed for you, Corley is leading from uh, Williams Devord. And then it's going to be Carranza Lopez immediately behind it. You can see they are the riders in and through. Very little separated riders. So one more of our under 23 women's quarterfinals to go. The uh, final of these. Remember, four riders going through. That's an all important battle. Get over the line in the front four. Yeah, that's last year's World Cup champion, Veronica Monica Stariska of Latvia. And one of our riders to watch in this one is Emily Huss of Great Britain. She's right there. She had a big tumble in uh, one of the rounds in Sakaraya, Turkey, but she was uh, relatively unscathed. I've had a quick chat with her today, and she's feeling good and looking to make more progress in this particular round. Okay, riders, random start. Riders ready, watch the gate. <laughs> So, as the last of the quarterfinals for the uh, women under 23 leaves the gate, heads down the hill, Emily Hutt on the inside for Great Britain, so she's on a great start as she heads into, oh, one, two riders gone down, Stariska stayed up right though, she's there in that second spot, putting the challenge now on Emily Hutt as they go down the second straight, the Belgian rider in there in three, that's Aiko Gomez, the former World Pump Track champion, she's in the mix as well, and I think it's one of the Colombian riders in there in that fourth spot, so four places, four riders stayed up right, so everybody's safe at this particular the moment in time Stariska taking the lead in that final turn Emily Hutt looking safe and in control she's in there in two Ico Gomez is going to get the three who gets that final qualifying spot it's going to be Cordero of Ecuador who goes through in that fourth position so another of our quarterfinals another tangle on the way through there at either side of the track and it just proves they're not always connected when we see the riders hitting the deck, but you can get it in your per peripheral vision. Yeah, it's a full face helmet, but you're going to see that. Let's take another look at this again. Yeah, and it's not like this turn, this first turn here at Papendal's narrow. It's actually quite wide, but everybody's threading the needle and trying to get into a particular position. And one rider just completely lost control on the inside ended up on the deck. Meanwhile, uh, Emily Hutt and Veronica Stariska were having their own personal battle into the final turn. You saw Emily check up there. Just, uh, she knew she was safe. She knew she was inside the top four. So she's kept herself uh, in position. She's got a good gate pick for the uh, next round. So she'll be happy with that one, I think. And on that ridge, we just saw the rider on the side. They're actually up and a waterway here, so looking good and uh, all OK. But the pinch came on in front, and you saw the speed came off, and that meant that the takeoff wasn't right, wasn't it? And uh, it has left with our four riders going through, headed up by Stariska, then Hutt Gomez and uh, Caldera. The four riders are through. So we're going to move very quickly on from our women's under-23 to the men's under-23. This promises to be an absolute cricket as well. And and uh, you can see our riders are lined up and ready to go already. Yeah, and that's one rider to keep an eye on. That's Callum Russell of Great Britain made the podium in round number two. Sakurai, he's there in gate number four on that 506 plate. So uh, all his friends and family back at Birmingham BMX Club in the UK will be cheering him on. And you can follow them on Instagram. I do that as well. And uh, as you can, most of our riders and uh, Russell, the one picked out uh, by Rich here, Rich, uh, of course, at BMX Commentator. If you want to follow him on Instagram, you can follow me, it's at Matt Fix the Pain. And make sure, of course, you go on and uh, give UCI BMX Racing a follow. Our riders being ready for the start. Nervous moments for these riders. I've seen plenty of riders on the deck. Let's hope it all stays safe this time around. Quarterfinal number one for the uh, men under 23 on the inside. You've got Jesse Asmus, looks like Pekanowski, who's got the best of it as he heads towards turn number one. Where is Callum Russell? He's inside the top three, I think, at the moment. So as we come in and out of that turn, down the straight, Pekanowski, Asmus, those guys, one and two, there's been a bit of a mix up. People have hit the deck coming out of that first turn. That looks like Marcus Leth, who's in there in that third spot at the minute, and there's no sign of Callum Russell. So I've got a feeling he's lying on the floor in turn number one. And as they go down that straight into that final corner, Asmus has taken the lead for. Australia, he's going to lead it down the final straight. Pekanowski in there in two, Marcus left in three, and a Bart Van Bemmelen. I think he will be the rider in four. So Callum Russell of Great Britain, his day ends early. No podium for him in round number three of the UCI BMX Racing World Cup, and that first turn seems to be giving people fits, Matt. We didn't see this, did we? We were here in practice, we were watching. It really wasn't just causing this level of problems and talking to the riders. 
it was not causing us many issues. We didn't have that marked down as a place where there was going to be problems, and a lot more here than Sakaria. So what's causing this, Rich? Let's, let's look and watch this back. Yeah, it looked like a very, very even start. You know, everybody was going well, but there's a pinch point as they come out of that first turn. Everybody's trying to line themselves up for the ideal line down that second straight, and that's where it funnels in. It gets narrow, and uh, unfortunately, if there's a touch of elbows, it can start a chain reaction and people end up on the floor. Meanwhile, Jesse Asmus of uh, Australia and Alexis Pikanowski of France, no such problems for them. They were going one and two. Marcus left in there in three, and Bart Van Bemmelen cruising across the line for a fourth place. So our first quarter final in the Amanda. We're going to move on to the second of our quarter finals as the clouds start to come over. So just uh, the temperature dropping a little bit here. Not going to affect the riders too much, but they are lined up, ready to go. Really looking forward to seeing who is going to take this out. So the results in a floor for the first heat in the quarter finals in the men's under 23. And uh, Asmus leading them in and uh, through. He gets through safely. Remember, only four riders coming through to qualify to move on from the quarterfinals to the semi finals now. This uh, should be interesting. Hot favourite in here. Absolutely. The winner of round number one and two in Turkey. Rico Beerman of New Zealand. Perfect record so far in the World Cup season. He's got Tim Goosens and uh, Kasper Peepers right there next to him. So the two Dutchmen will be looking to cut him off down that first straight. Goosens focused and in control. Just acknowledges the local crowd and uh, he'll be looking for a good performance in this quarterfinal. So our riders are lined up on the start. They'll be readied and then sent off into action. Hot favourite here, Rich, who's your pick? Come on. Oh, it's Rico Beerman on the inside for New Zealand for sure, but there's no such thing as a sure thing in BMX racing. Uh, he's looking very focused, riding around the paddock at the back. We're looking very, very much ready for this. So will he be able to make it count? Can he move through smoothly? Let's find out. Ready, watch the gate. Quarterfinal number two for the men under 23, and it looks like being on the inside, but look at the man in the middle. That's Molina of Chile. He came very close to winning the world title in this category in March last year, and he's worked his way into that second spot. So New Zealand in one, Chile in two. There's a big battle for three and four between the two Dutch riders, and as they head into the turn, that's the way it looks now. Beerman. Uh, shaking down the rest of this uh, lap, but Molina's not far away at all. I've got a feeling that's Tim Goosen's in there in that third spot. And uh, no, there's a bit of action as they go towards the final turn. Casper Peeper's still holding on to it, and he's under pressure from Radaelli as they come down towards the line. Looks like Peepers is going to hang on for that fourth spot. Goosen's into Molina, waving his arms for some reason as he came across the line, but Rico Beerman picking up exactly where he left off in Sakaraya, Turkey, taking the win in quarterfinal number two. And he was absolutely dominant, wasn't he, in uh, Sakuraya. And he's just continuing onwards here. I mean, just said he looked good when he was walking, riding around and walking around uh, backstage in the team area. And that's just confidence, race-winning confidence. It, it just breeds more confidence, breeds great performance. And that's what we've seen again. Yeah, once you let the genie out of the bottle with a few wins, then that, you know, that confidence just builds, as you say, Matt. And uh, this certainly should, with Rico on the inside. And Molina came across from about lane five or six and took away that second position. Uh, I've got a feeling it was the, I'm not sure which rider it was, he crashed coming out of the first turn. Meanwhile, Beerman, Molina, one and two, and the, it was the battle of the Dutchies for three and four at the moment, at that particular moment in time, I should say. Goosen's had three, Peepers had four, Radielli of Italy was trying to work his way in, couldn't quite make it stick, and he's going to have to come back in round four and try all over again. Oh, oh, great racing so far. The crowd absolutely loving it. There's a, a real big music festival next door. And the crowd's coming across from that in to oh, watch the action. Beerman, Goosens, uh, Mullen Vergara, followed by Pipers coming through. And Radelli uh, into fifth place. Not making it, just challenging on the D and uh, the racing coming thick and fast here in Papandal. It is round number three of the UCI BMX Racing World Cup. We are going to move on to our next quarterfinal. This is heat number three in the men's under 23 quarterfinal. Yeah, and there is one rider to keep an eye on, Drew Polk in his eighth final. He made such a move in that final turn. It was a, a last gas dive, and he managed to steal the position and hold on and go through. And his, uh, countryman Spencer Cole, he's been riding very well all day today as well, and he'll be looking for a really good result. Well, let's see if we're going to see a, a return of uh, the uh, 
Polk's uh, two-wheel slide pretty much, wasn't it? As he came around that turn, it was very, very close to coming uh, adrift completely and taking everybody out, but uh, he'll be looking for a clean run now. The riders are being readied up on the uh, gate. Remember, gate one on your right, gate eight out on the left-hand side as we look at it. The opposite for our riders. Okay, riders, random start. It's quarter final riders three. Ready, ready to go. Watch the gate. And let's keep an eye on Drew Polk out there in lane number seven, see what he's got in the turns this time around. But it looks like the man who's going to lead it into turn number one is Matteo Colsonet of France. And he picks up the whole shot. He's out there in one. He's got Matthew Shaka in there as well. His countryman. Oh, one rider's right, gone off to the left hand side. Sorry, the right hand side. I saw where uh, one of the uh, inflatable fences flying up in the air. So that usually means that somebody has hit the deck. And as they go in and out of that second turn and down the straight, everybody picking different lines. I think it was Drew Polk who actually hit the deck because I can't see him out on track right now. Colson still leading it out. He's going to bring it to the line. Colson is going to take the win. It's a big battle for two, three, and four. Jacques Skurspec Spencer Cole just about going through and Drew Polk picking himself up at the exit of turn number one. Well, he pushed it right to the limit, didn't he, when we were watching it racing earlier. And it's a fine line. The margins are so tight, aren't they? And you've just got to keep it together. And it was just too much that time. We're looking forward to see where that went wrong. Yeah, I've got a feeling he might have just got a, a nudge of an elbow as he came out of the turn, and that probably caused him to just uh, slide out and uh, end up on the floor. But there's always round number four to go at again. So a disappointing end to the day for Drew Polk of the USA. And you've got to remember, of course, this, the rules for BMX. So you can't just deliberately buy somebody off the track for those people who are maybe new to the sport, because we've not just got ardent BMX fans who are here. We've got oh, lots yeah, of new yeah, riders yeah, as yeah, well yeah, as yeah, well. There are some potential yeah, riders. It's not quite... Uh, Bumping and barging all the way, is it? Yeah, and as they came round, or oh, Drew ran wide, clipped the uh, inflatable fencing, and that's what pushed him over the handlebars. So he just couldn't quite hold on to the line. You could just see him there in the bottom of the shot, hitting the deck. So, like I say, his day ended early. No such problems for Matteo Colsne at this moment in time. And, uh, yeah, you know, Mathis Jacquet in there as well. Skurzbeck of Germany and Spencer Cole rounding out the top. So we have uh, the quarterfinals heat three confirmed in there with Colsoni up at the uh, top. Polk right down at the bottom, not finishing his heat here in the men's under 23 quarterfinals. So our under 23 is done and dusted uh, in terms of a Polk's day at the office. One more to go. And uh, Marcelek, uh, he's going to be looking for a good result here today, really to rack some more points up. Yeah, he made the podium in round number two in uh, Sakurai in Turkey. So uh, he's certainly got going one step further today. And another rider to watch is Jason Nordan of the Netherlands. He's there in lane number one. And we know he's been putting in the work uh, with uh, Twan van Gent. So, uh, yeah, he's got a good coach behind him. And uh, it'd be interesting to see what he can pull up. So the riders are ready there at the top of the hill. You can see that they're about to be set loose down onto the track in front of the crowd here in Papadale round number three. This is the last of our men's under-23 quarterfinals. Okay, riders, random start. Riders ready, watch the gate. That's the quarterfinals for the men under 23. Julian Baxter-Bosch of the Netherlands didn't get the start that he wanted. Oh, looks like two riders have hit the deck on the inside. I've got a feeling one of them was Jason Nordam as well. So his day might be over. And as they head down the second straight, looks like the rider from New Zealand, Bennett Greenoff, who's out in front at the minute. And uh, the rider going through as well. I've got a feeling he's Pierre Gis from France, who's in there in that second position. So New Zealand looking like one and three at the moment. Baxter-Bosch, he's in fifth. He wants a fourth. He's on the outside looking in. And as they go in and out of the final turn, it is New Zealand, France, New Zealand, one, two, and three. Looks like that's the way he's going to finish. Who got that fourth spot? I've got a feeling it was Federico Capello of Argentina, who's made it into the top four, but we'll wait for the results. Let's see what happens as they cross the line. Uh, no, crash. Um, we've talked about this pressure really coming on to the uh, riders that's been building during the course of the day. We've seen a lot of racing, and we are seeing more and more incidents, aren't we, uh, today, as we move towards those World Championships. Let's take a look at this, because it was not another clean run again. No, it was not. I'm a Mars who got together in that first turn. Meanwhile, Baisterbosch was right there at the back of the pack. He didn't get the start he wanted at all, and they took a connection, and down they both went. Nordam and Marzalek 
Meanwhile, uh, Benny Greenoff was out in front, and that was Matt Gilston of Great Britain who was in there in that third position, just going all stealth in his all-black uniform. And uh, Federico Capello of Argentina looking good in four with Bikes the Bosch chasing him down into that final turn. But yeah, New Zealand taking the win. France in there in two, Great Britain in three, Argentina in four. That rounded out the last of the quarterfinals for the men under 20. So the men's under 23 and the women's under 23 don't fall the moment. We're going to move across to our elite riders next. So we're just moving up from that young age category in to the riders racing in elite category. That is uh, our senior as you just uh, see the riders being helped off and out uh, from the uh, track. And they get themselves patched together and uh, I'm sure it's not going to be their first time on the deck. I think anybody who rides a bike on two wheels is a bit like you and I, Rich. You've got uh, the scars to prove it all over the place. Absolutely. And there is your official result. Benny Greenoff taking the win. Pierre Gis of France in two. Matthew Gilston, a great performance for Great Britain in three. And Federico Capello in four. And Julian Bosch just not quite doing enough to make it through. So a, uh, a great shot of the surrounding countryside. We're actually here in the Olympic uh, Training Centre in Papandale. And the uh, track here in the centre was built uh, for the uh, London Olympic Training. It was actually built before the uh, London Olympic track was finished. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, Dutch wanting to get ahead of the game. And uh, talking of Olympics, there's your double Olympic champion, Mariana Pajon of Colombia, the queen bee of BMX. And uh, Gabriela Bolle, also out of Colombia. She's right next to him, gate number two. So the Colombians got the two inside lines done, dusted and sorted. And keep an eye on Australia's Lauren Reynolds in lane number three. So the riders all in the gates and they will be surfing, just get themselves ready, clipped in and ready to go. The uh, team on the top okay, uh, signaling, it's time to go racing again. Riders ready, watch the gate. Quarterfinal one for the women elite heading down the hill. Let's have a look who's got the best of the best of the starts as they head down towards turn number one. Mariana Pound looking like she's going to pick up the familiar hole shot. Oh, one rider's gone up the turn. I've got the feeling that was Gabriella Bolle of Colombia who's gone up the turn and that might have just ruined her day. And uh, Agostina Cavalli of uh, Argentina in there as well. In that third position, it looks like the Swiss rider Nadine Eberhard in for Lauren Reynolds safe in control in that second spot as they go into the turn. But it is the Queen Bee of BMX, Mariana Pajon, double Olympic champion from Colombia, taking the win in this quarterfinal. Lauren's going to get the two. Uh, Cavalli for three, Eberhard for four, Lexis Colby just missing out. And uh, Gabriella Bolle, well, the goggles were ripped off as she crossed the line. She definitely wasn't happy with that one. She wasn't. What a contrast between our last ride across the line and the first. And we saw her. She was uh, doubled up on the uh, last of the jumps coming into the final turn. And then she was whipping it up on the way back through. And that's the front of the race. Goggles off at the back of the race. And it's just such a contrast, isn't it? And you can go from elation to despair in the blink of an eye. Let's watch this back. Yeah, literally in a split second. So there was Mariana leading it out. And uh, yeah, she just must have just caught a pedal or something. And it was just enough to you know, rip her foot out of the pedal and that was it then. Her, uh, you know, her race was almost over. Meanwhile, Mariana Pajon out front, no such problems. Lauren Reynolds looking very, very comfortable in two. She's been all smiles in the pits today and uh, looks very relaxed. Looking forward to another uh, weekend of racing here in Papadal. And that was Ariel Martin, one of the uh, Team USA coaches, just willing her rider on down that final street. I'm really interested to see the uh, crossover here because, in fact, uh, Ariel, regular rider on indoor on e sports on uh, the Swift and uh, she rides for the Ionian race team. Yeah. So, uh, completely out as well. And uh, not to be her day, though, Colby in fifth place there. Yeah, that's not the place you want to be in any knockout round. Fifth, it's uh, essentially the first loser, but there's always another BMX race for you to have a go at. And our crowd just enjoying the uh, traditional frites and mayonnaise on a nice balmy day here at Papendal. And uh, we're just waiting for quarterfinal number two, which features none other than Laura Smulders, the local favourite, the world champion, for Alicia Stancils in this one as well along with Olympic silver medalist Elise Willoughby. And that's just three out of the seven that are up there. So yeah, Elise Willoughby, coached by husband Sam, also an Olympic silver medalist. And uh, Elise is a 10-time USA BMX Pro Champion. And they don't give away those titles, BMX is just so strong. Yeah, Manon Veenstra of uh, the Netherlands lined up in gate number two. She's always there or thereabouts when finals time comes around. 
It's uh, far lies. I think the, the Dutch crowd will be on the 110, which is the riding champion. gate number one Demo on the right hand Hattie side Gama of the screen. And that is Laura, Laura Smulders. The there is the 110, the familiar okay. number. Okay, riders, random start. Riders more, more World Cups than anybody riders else. Riders ready, watch the gate. Oh, we should make it uh, here today. Oh, let's see that. Let's go and away they go. Yeah, Laura looking like she's got a great start. Elise is in there as well, and coming across from the outside. That looks like Elka Van Hoof. Felicia stands in the middle, but it looks like the whole shot is going to go to the local favourite. Oh, Willoughby's gone already. Willoughby, Van Hoof, both hitting the deck, taking another rider as well, and they all pick themselves up in turn number one. So Laura Smulders, Felicia Stansel, one and two. Man on Veenstra in there in three. Now there's three riders, there's another spot left, and it looks like the rider in there in four is Konami Tano out of Japan, but it's Smulders, Stansel, Veenstra. One, two, and three as they come across the line. Laura takes the win. Felicia in there in two. Manon going through in three. Konami Tano in four, but disaster central for Elise Willoughby in turn number one. Well, they came in there together and then they just went across the track at each other. You saw Stansel as she came up from the finished gantry up at the uh, slope that takes the speed off the right, sitting a big look over her shoulder to see who was behind her, and there was hardly anybody left. Yeah, because at that point, all you're doing when you're coming around that corner, if you hear a massive clatter of bikes and everything else behind you, you haven't got time to stop and look. You've just got to listen and think, wow, I wonder who that was. And uh, Elise just taking a quick look at her crash helmet and going, well, it saved me. And uh, she can come back and fight another day in round number four. But Laura got a great start. Elise was looking good in the middle, but she seemed to bobble a little bit. Maybe she overjumped that first one. She dived inside. Elke Van Hoof came down. Connection, both riders hitting the deck. And I think it collected Saya Takayama of Japan at the same time. Meanwhile, Laura Smulders of the Netherlands was leading into the turn, probably wondering what had gone on behind her. She takes the win aboard that brand new console BMX project bike. Felicia Stansel in two, Matt and Veenstra in three, Konami Tano around the top four. So halfway through our women elite here in the quarterfinals, oh, and your results are up. So small stance on Razor and that Tano who go through. You see two of those riders not finishing, but so all the riders back up and uh, heading away from the track. Back to the team encampment behind. We'll get looked after by the Swan News, by the mechanics, all of the uh, support crew who are here to look after our riders. Uh, look great to see the riders search on it. Mr. Rico Berman, uh, it looks like they're pretty chilled. Yeah, Jesse Asmus, Asmus, sorry, I should say. Um, looking very resplendent in that lovely hat as uh, Helke Van Hoof walks away and uh, riders just uh, settling down behind the line, get prepared and uh, big smiles all around from the rider from Team USA as uh, we await the uh, start of the next lap. Columbia, used to the sunny and warm weather, the uh, very muggy conditions that we have here today at Papendal. They did ride him really strongly as a while, but they're not going to have long to wait before they're able to watch the next of the action. The riders are ready at the top of the hill, just waiting for the track to be sorted out and cleared. What you can't really see is the work that's being done by all of the team back behind the scenes and that they're cleaning that track down. They're making sure everything is nice and smooth, that any of the damage is done from the crashes is cleared up as well, because obviously that's going to affect the next of the heats, isn't it, Rich? Yeah, our uh, track maintenance team have been absolutely on it all through the event here at Papendal and they've done a superb job. It looks like a, you know, almost a, a bowling green playing surface here, uh, minus the grass of course. <laughs> minus the grass, plus uh, several doubles, a big gap jump to go across. Uh, oh yeah, plus uh, a whole load of racing as yeah. well. But it's smooth, that was the point I was getting to. <laughs> and there's your start list, Molly Simpson, Judy Bauer, Meryl Smulders, Sakaki Sakakibara, Delaney Vaughan and Peyton Ragnar of the USA. So the USA well represented in this one. Two Dutch riders, an Australian and a Canadian. Well, let's see who's going to take it out. The riders are up there in the gate and are ready to go by the look of it. In fact, there they are. So uh, it takes through the riders uh, and uh, Will Smulders uh, be able to excel. It's her home track, isn't it? Yeah, Meryl Smulders, uh, sister of Laura. You know, they, okay. they train together, they ride together, okay, and uh, they've won medals together. So, uh, yeah, looking for a big performance from Meryl this weekend. 
as they head down the hill. Merrill looking like she got a fairly decent start. Say it's a Kakibara of Australia in the middle. She was all smiles in the pits this morning. Managed to have a quick chat and she said she was feeling good and she's certainly looking good as she comes out of that turn. So the Australian leading it out. That's Peyton Ryden or into Molly Simpson of Canada in three. And who's the rider in four? It looks like Peyton Ryden is getting involved in this one as well. So as they come in and out of the turn down the straight, Meryl Smulders has now worked her way into that fourth spot. So she's looking to make her way through. Molly Simpson taking to the skies, but it's Say it's a Kakibara of Australia. She's going to take the win in this particular lap. Peyton Rhino battling with Molly Simpson for that second spot. It's a photo finish. Meryl Smulders in four. Judy Bow in five. Delaney Vaughan in six. But certainly a fantastic performance from the Australian. And Rich, for those people who are maybe not regulars watching, when we get a photo finish, it's just to separate those positions and make sure we get it the right way around. Yes, absolutely. And uh, obviously, there's timing and scoring to, uh, to, you know, just to double check it and make sure we get every single um, scoring correct. So a great deal of infrastructure in here to check on those runners coming in and through. And uh, really key, let's wash that back. Okay, yeah, Molly Simpson the right there on the inside. Doing it for Canada and she had Delaney Vaughan next to her, but it was uh, Saint Skakibara of Australia in lane number three who got the best of it as they headed towards turn number one. And certainly uh, coming across from the outside, Peyton Bridenor doing a great job. Merrill's, Merrill Smulders just working away into that top four, and uh, yeah, the certain you can see the tension in the faces of the coaches at the side of the track. But Saya uh, taking that win, she had a couple of bike lengths to play with at the end of it all. Merrill Smulders rounding out the top four. And each of our runs here are backed up by a big team as well. And they are involved and invested in this as well, aren't they? And they're going to be watching the results, watching to see if their rider goes through. Uh, so you can see our four qualifiers up on your screen. Two riders, as well, if their day done, they'll have to compete in our next round. That's going to be round number four. But on to the next of our heats and really here there's one rider we should be focused on isn't there yeah it's the uh, red plate the leader of the series the 911 it's bethany shriva of great britain she's out there okay. in lane number six but when you've got riders okay, like right. zoe Clayson's on the inside in uh, lane number one it's not going to be very easy to win this lap so the two Swiss riders, Clayson's and Eberhard, were against number one and two. And it is the former European champion and the current European champion battling into that first corner. Zoe's got the best of the exchange bets in there in two at the moment. And the rider in three looks like Maylene Kelstrup, I think it is, of the Denmark. Yep, she's in that third position. So she's looking good right now. And out there in four, I've got a feeling it's Leah Brindonk of France. So uh, it is Zoe Clayson's, Beth Schriever, one and two into the turn. Looking safe and in control, Maylene Kelstrup now making a move for that second spot down the final straight. Who's going to get the fourth? Is Brindon going to hang on to it or is Eberhard going to steal it from her? Clayson's Kelstrup, Shriva, Brindon going through one, two, three, and four. Talia Burford in the mix as well. So. I think all good. you've almost run out of words. Run there, out of superlatives there, Matt. Yeah, that absolutely. doesn't happen very often, not believe me. Definitely not. So oh, we just uh, saw the uh, Bethy show coming through, and uh, Beth Rocky is absolutely She showed that, but not to be her day up at the front so far, but that doesn't matter at this stage, does it? No, she only needs to be inside the top four, and she knows just to put solid, solid laps in. In BMX, you only need to win one lap, and it's the last one. Well, so. with those words of wisdom from Rachel, let's have a look at the uh, confirmed results. Let's uh, take top spot up there with Burford and uh, Steve O'Connor coming out of the competition. So our riders who are qualified will move on through to our semi-finals. Quarterfinal number one for the men elite contains the fastest lap so far, Leo Garayan, France. He's done 34.543 and he is in this quarterfinal, but I'm sure that lap time will come down as we go through the day. Later, Mark Hart, Kennedy in there as well, Roman May, Jeremy Smith, Dick van der Berg, and Magnus Dyer. Well, some really big names in here for riders we expect to be featured in the final. And it's quite a stack field here in this particular heat, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've got World Cup winners, you've got the reigning world champion in this one, you've got one of the uh, top guys in the USA BMX Pro Series, so this one is stacked. Well, you 
can see those are rainbow bands inside the jersey. And away we go. Yep, Joseph Leto on the inside for Team USA. And Mark Hart right there next to him. And here comes the French rider, Leo Garayan. Is he going to lead it into the turn? Dave van der Berg's getting in the mix as well. Good to see him back on it. But out front at the minute, Garayan looking good. That's Isaac Kennedy in there in two. Van der Berg's on the inside in three. Here comes back the Steyer of Denmark. He's working his way inside the top four now. But it's still the French rider. Oh, it's Roman May leading it out. Isaac Kennedy in there in two. Mixing on the two French riders. I do apologise for that. But as they go into the final corner, oh, Kennedy slides as he managed to hold on to it. Here comes Dave Vanderberg. Romeu, Kennedy, Vanderberg. You could almost throw a blanket over him as they cross the line. Magnus Dyer in there as well. Garoyan ended up in fifth. But a great ride for Dave Vanderberg on his home track here in Papua. Absolutely flying, but a little bit of a scare coming around that turn there. But they held it together going on. And those reflexes, absolutely key. Holding the bike in position, getting them into place, getting them back in over the line there. So, uh, so we just await the uh, confirmation of those positions. A photo finish across the front four there here. And we've talked about pressure quite a lot here, Richard. Of course, we have got, of course, coming up, World Championships in Glasgow. And this is really where these riders are building towards at the moment. And then in the future, we've got powers coming up as well. And that makes a big, big difference. That's weighing on a lot of riders' minds and a lot of the coaches and the team behind the uh, scenes as well. Yeah, and all the points that you win at World Cup all go to your nation's rankings anyway. So, yeah, the pressure's on all the time. Roman May, you confirmed, is taking the win. Isaac Kennedy in there into Dave Vanderberg with the strong third place, Magnus. Dyer stealing away that fourth spot by the narrowest of margins from Leo Garoyan. So heat number one done in our men's elite quarter finals. Let's move on to our next number two of four. Is it going to be just as close? Oh, we're going to see another photo finish, Rich. Well, it's going to be tough. And uh, with a man like Silma, Sylvain Andre on the inside there, you know, you can never uh, never say die. It's a quick touch of, uh, of the uh, post there for luck. And, uh, yeah, he's got, Thanks, Rich. he's got Jeremy Renkerel right next door. Sorry, next door but one with the 70 plate in there as well. And that's going to be Mateo Carmona Garcia. So there's going to be some serious horsepower as they come down the hill in this second quarterfinal. Okay. So the ride is lined and ready. The timing all ready okay, to go. Right. Foot finish right. reset. Let's see if we're going to need it this time around. So I've got my eyes on lane one and three, the French duo, uh, Andre and Renkerel, and it looks like they've set really good times as they come down towards that first turn. Andre on the inside, picking up the whole shot. He's in there, Carmona Garcia inside the top final. Oh, one's exited out. I'm not sure who that was. I've got a feeling it was Jeremy Renkerel. So his day might be over. And as they go in and out of the turn, looks like moving up into the top four is a Mitchell Shotman. And he's worked his way into a qualifying position right now. And as they head towards the final turn, Andre still holding on to it. Come on, Garcia. I'll see you. people are talking about diving left, right, and centre. Everybody looking for a position. Looks like it's going to be a photo finish for that fourth spot. Who's going to get it at the line? Andre definitely taking the win. Carmona Garcia, Jeremy Renkerel did hang on. It was Roman Mayer who exited on that uh, second straight. Ryan two gets in there in five. Renkerel in four. Mitchell Shotman getting the finish he wanted in three. He's through to the next round. But no problems for Sylvan Andre. He checked out and gone. Checked out gone and uh, didn't bother paying his bill. He was absolutely flying there. But I'll tell you something, as he came into that last turn, there was a real haul around on the bars there on that last turn coming in. If we get to see him coming into the straight, and it's a very tight pull there. You could just see running in second position, really fighting to keep that with the pressure coming behind. Yeah, that lovely pickup manual there from uh, Jeremy Renkerel over the uh, the jump before the final turn, and then Dave Vanderberg, right, uh, sorry, Mitchell Shotman right there in the middle, just taking that third spot. So yeah, exactly what he wanted in Renkerel inside the top four. So watching these riders coming in and through the uh, variation of elation and dejection showing on the riders' uh, faces. The Sylvain Andre going uh, through and with a uh, pretty fast time, 34.666. Now uh, the devil's in the detail there and uh, our timing system is going right the way down. And uh, very close so far. We're going to see if uh, that continues onwards as we move through our men's elite. Yep, K3 of the quarterfinals. I've got a feeling that's Alexis Pekinowski just looking up, pen looking on pensively, waiting for his, uh, his next lap. And uh, Arthur P. Lab there on the inside for France with uh, Ruben Gomez right next to him. And uh, 
Olympic champion and uh, he won his world title here as well, Nick Kimmon, in his uh, now familiar gate eight out there on the outside. But he's got to battle Jamie O'Brink to get across, so uh, let's see what happens. And in the middle, the little magician, Carlos Ramirez. Well, let's see if he can pull the magic out this time round. It wasn't to be at uh, Sicaria. Can Kimmon come across as he traditionally does? Ready, up. Ready to go, the gate ready. Let's see who's it going to be. Yep, is it going to be another Neat Kimmon masterclass from lane number eight? Certainly looks like it at the moment, but he's got pressure with Arthur Pilar on the inside. Gomez is in there as well. Pilar getting the whole shot. Kimmon in two. Gomez in three. Oh, it looks like Gomez has had to slam the anchors on, and his lap is actually over. So that's going to mix it right up and coming through as well. That looks like uh, the rider from. Uh, uh, the Swiss, uh, sorry, it's Jamie O'Brink, I think, in there in that fifth spot right now. So Pilard, Kimmon, one and two into the final turn. They're looking at, oh, Jamie O'Brink hits the deck in the final corner. He went for the move, he couldn't make it stick. I think that's Renault Blanc in there in that third position. Wow, all action that one, but do or die for Jamie O'Brink in the final corner, and it didn't pay off. Well, he sat down looking pretty dejected at the moment. He wasn't the first of the riders to come out of that race, was he? And uh, whilst Columbia have come through and they're uh, looking at each other and going, yep, we've got a rider in, not to be for everybody. And it uh, looks like everybody back up and uh, going to be rolling the way in through. And you know what? Whilst all that was going on, Carlos Ramirez, a little bit of magic, worked his way into the top four. <laughs> that makes you happy, doesn't it, Rich? Hey. Now he's looking good now. I just seen Jamie O'Brink uh, coming in along the straight. Let's take a, uh, a little uh, a look back. So O'Brink uh, uh, rolling his way underneath the uh, finishing gantry, but this is how it started. Yeah, Nick came in from the outside. It's almost his uh, default gate now, and I think he over actually jumped actually over jumped that first double, which just took a little bit of momentum out of him, and that allowed Pilar just to kind of steal away the whole shot. And uh, the coach is all looking on, discussing lines and tactics and things of that nature. Renault Blanc was in there in three. Brink went for the move on Ramirez, couldn't quite make it stick. He ended up on the floor. Meanwhile, Pilard, Kim and Blanc were going one, two, three. And Ramirez just cheekily working his way in. Yeah, makes his way in and through. Should be in full spot. And he is, so Ramirez comes in and through. Uh, so Blanc, uh, Kim and Pilard go through above him. But uh, all of our riders are making the way back off the uh, track. The track just getting dusted back down again. You can just see the brushes in action from the commentary box here in Papendale. And you can see plenty of umbrellas up. No uh, chance. More parasol today than they are umbrella. And not something that uh, either Rich or I from the north of England are uh, particularly used to. We used to uh, fending off the rain, but not to be here in Papendale. The riders are in really hot today and nice weather here to go racing in. Yeah, it's uh, perfect condition. Cedric Booty, the former junior world champion, he's there on the inside, gate number one. Diego Blader took a win in Glasgow at a World Cup. He's there in two, and the winner of round number two, Yoris Dode, on that 33 plate, he's in lane. So here we go, let's see who's going to take this as they come through. Away they go off from the gate. Yeah, let's have a look as they head down the hill and who's going to get the whole shot beauty on the inside. Diego Abelada in there as well as they go into that first turn. Looks like Yoris is getting pumped in back. Oh, one rider's right, hit the deck. I've got a feeling that was uh, Leto, I think, from uh, the USA, but uh, out front at the minute. And uh, in control it is the rider from... Uh, Switzerland, Cedric Booty out there in front, Diego Abeleda in two, was just having a quick look just to see what the mix-up had, had uh, thrown into the mix, and it looks like Yoris Dodi isn't going to work, work his way through, so Booty in there, definitely taking the win, Abeleda in two, Racine in three, Justin Kimmon in four, didn't quite catch what happened to Yoris Dodi, that was the bit I was trying to work out, that mixed it all up completely. Well, Yente Ugamar was in the Max Kearns was the rider who hit the deck in the Stay Strong kit. That was the bit that confused me slightly. <laughs> it's very easy, and it's so fast, isn't it, the action here? And let's have a look at this back. It's probably going to be a little bit easier at the same time round. Hopefully, we're going to see this from the uh, Stargate. Yeah, Cedric Booty got a great start. He was looking good. He had Arbelade right there next to him. Couldn't quite see. Ah, Yoris didn't get over the uh, the jump. That was what's held him up, and uh, Yenzi Ugamar was mixed up in that one as well. And as uh, they went into the second turn, you know, it was uh, it was all guns blazing, but as they came down the final straight, Cedric Booty out there in control, Arbelader in two, Roman Racine in three, Justin Kimmon going through in four, all smiles and waving to the local crowd. 
Well, all smiles and waving to the local crowd here. And it is a really mixed crowd. It's great to see some fresh faces on the side watching, not just right, our so regular beer mates. But we've also got quite a lot of people coming in from the festival next door and treat to some great racing there. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's always nice to introduce newcomers to the sport of BMX racing because people don't realise how rad this sport is until they actually sit down and watch it. Now, and uh, got to say, make sure you get to the side of the track, wherever your local track is. There's some great racing to watch at all levels, from grassroots right the way through to the World Cups and the World Championships, which this year is going to be in Glasgow. Yep. So, semi-final number one for the. Uh, Women under 23. Tessa Martinez, Michelle Vissing. There is Tessa Martinez. We've got Megan Williams in this one, Yvette Devord. Okay. Isabella Carranza Lopez in his place. Okay, right. Dominica Marrera and uh, Seti Budi from Indonesia. Okay, underway. Here we go. Four riders going through, four riders going out. Michelle Vissing and Tessa Martinez got a great start. Oh, one, two riders gone down now. Yvette Devord was one of them, and I think it was the Indonesian rider who's hit the deck as well and as they come out of the turn Vissing holding on to it Martinez in there in two looks like the Colombian rider going through in three and that is Innes Clayson's rounding out the top four right now Megan Williams in five she's got a little bit of work to do if she wants to work her way into another World Cup main and as they go down towards the final corner Vissing is in control Tessa Martinez looking comfortable in two Megan Williams has now worked her way up into that final qualifying spot stealing it away from Innes Clayson's Vissing crosses the line she takes the win Martinez Lopez and Williams that's your one, two, three, and four in that first semi final, but it was all action as they went down that first straight. Well, it's another incident packed race race coming thick and fast. And is there a point at which the race can be voided and that uh, they would then rerun it? Have you seen that happen? It would have to be like, you know what? Like, I think something like all eight riders or something hitting the deck before they even get to the first turn. There is a, a ruling on it, but I just can't quite pull it out the back of my mind right this very split second. <laughs> the massive rule, but yeah. the, the, it does exist. It there? does exist. So you can see our four riders who are going through, Vissing Martinez, uh, Carenza Lopez uh, going in and through as well. And the riders uh, currently at the moment getting ready for the uh, second of our semi final it's in up on the top of the hill here so you can see uh, that we've got emily hutt uh, third from the left you've got uh, martin's in here gay heart as well who's going to take this out remember the uh, fastest the gate the one they all want is gate number one that's the one on our right hand side it's the shortest line into the corner and if you okay. can use it to your advantage you've got that fast start okay, right. it should right. give you prime position but it's not always the case and it's definitely very very right. today with all of the incidents out on track. Yes, so second semi-final underway. Veronica Starisker in this one. Ava Corley in the mix as well. And her riders already going to shuffle back. That looks like uh, Emily Hutt in there as well. As they go into that first turn, Emily Hutt in a qualifying position right now. Singalani going through in four. And um, uh, Veronica Starisker getting stuck in the middle of this one. She's right there out in front. Looks like Ava Corley in that second spot. Emily Hutt in three. And the Belgian rider working away into four is Aiko Gomez, the former World Pump track champion. And uh, Singalani's in there in five so Singalani needs to go from five to four if she's going to make it she's gone for the move underneath Gomez and she's stolen it away so Stariska is going to get the win it's going to go Stariska, Corley, Hutt and Singalani I think worked her way into the top four as well Aiko Gomez I think just got passed down that final straight after making a superb move in the final turn Oh, we've seen all action aren't we? on those turns. Certainly turns one and to the last turn coming in is really sorting these riders out as they come through. You can just see the uh, runs, but with a lot of the uh, team crew are watching great views from all around the track. You get really up close to the action. You've seen if you're watching the side as we've seen on our screens to risk a Heading up at the uh, top four, there's risk of Coley Hutt along with a single line going in and through from the semi finals into our finals. Well, the yeah, sun continues to shine here in Papandale. Remember, this is round number three as so we move across and uh, we move from the uh, uh, women across and uh, you can see oh, we're can all ready to go we're going thick and fast today to try and uh, keep on a track our semi-finals well 
They are going to be interesting uh, to see who can go through four riders going through to the finals. Remember, the other four, well, they've got a race again when we move on to our next round. Yeah, so you've got Rico Beeman, Tim Goosens, uh, Spencer Cole, Matthew Gilston, Bart Van Bemmelen, uh, Maurizio Molina, Pierre Gis, and uh, Mathis Jacquet from France, all lining up in the first of the semi finals for the men under 23. And all eyes will be on the 500 plate of Rico Beeman. Riders ready. Oh, can Watch he do game. it again? He's going to have to uh, if he wants to move through. I think his pressure on his shoulders. Away they go. Yeah, Beerman looking like he got a really good start. Goosen's right in there next to him. Matthew Gilson just working his way into a position now where he can try and make some moves. But Beerman gets the whole shot. It's Beerman. Goosen's one and two. Molina in there in three. One rider exits to the right hand side. Didn't quite catch you. That was Matthew Shackham in there as well. And Spencer Coles in that final qual final qualifying spot right now. Being chased down by Bart Van, Bart Van Bevelen. So Cole in that fourth position trying to make a move on Molina in three coming to the final turn it is Beam and Goosens one and two oh Coles under pressure now from Van Bevelen as they come to the line Molina for the three Van Bevelen stealing away the four from Spencer Cole right at the final second and he timed that move to perfection and not just the timing to have the power at the end of that because your legs are burning by the time you come into that final second that last push for the line you know, it's absolute agony for these riders and still managed to take that. That's showing some uh, some sheer power at the end. That's some good one, isn't it? Yeah, Rich? there was plenty going on in that lap. I could see Matthew Gilston desperately looking for a move, and he couldn't quite make it happen. But Rico Beerman is the man in control so in the men under 23. And there is your result: Beerman, Gilston, Molina, Van Bemmelen, literally right at the last split second from Spencer Cole. And Spencer's going to have to go away and work out what he's going to do in round number four of the UCI BMX Racing World Cup. So you can see uh, Berman going through, uh, four riders uh, through, four riders going for an early shower, maybe going uh, and uh, working out what they're going to do because they won't be heading off to the uh, festival right next door to us here in, 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 in the Netherlands now. Here we go. Next Who's up? your pick? Yeah, Come we've on, got Rich. Matteo Colson here right there on the inside, but I would keep my eye on uh, Alexis Pikanowski of France. He's there in gate number four on that 5.11 plate, and he's got the skills to make stuff happen. So the riders lined up, ready to go. The gate approach. Away he goes. Yep, heading downhill. Jesse Asmus of uh, Australia not getting the start that he wanted, but it is Pekanowski, the man we mentioned just before the gate dropped. He's leading it out, and uh, the uh, Dutch rider Gasper Peepers is in there as well, going through in two. And uh, as they head towards that second turn, the French rider just having a quick look behind just to see who's there. I've got a feeling that was a Matteo Colsonet in that third spot, and he's holding on to it. But the pressure is coming now on Colsonet. They've got a, a big queue of riders behind him trying to work their way around. It's going to be all actually in the final corner. Jesse Asmus. Was of, uh, Australia is going to work his way into the top four. What a move in the final turn from the Australian. Asmus going through, courtesy of a great last turn move. It's really, really different, isn't it, here at Papadol. It's an iconic track. It's a word that's been used all weekend long. I'll tell you something, it's really living up. It's a reputation. And... Is it more technical than we saw in rounds one and uh, two? Uh, I think it is here, and it's just a mixture of speed and technicality as well. Like Colson here was right there in that third spot as they went through the second turn, and uh, as he came to the line, he was pushing, pushing, pushing. Peepers, Colson here making it in, but the Australian, what a move in that final corner. Absolutely superb. So here we go, the confirmed results are always that Peepers going uh, through. Heading up at the run to make the way through from our men's under 23 semi finals. We're going to be heading in to our finals. So, the women's and men's semi finals are done and just in the under 23 competition, which means that we are going to move our way through. This should be very interesting indeed. Two smolders lined up on the line. Are they going to uh, take away 50% uh, of the uh, qualifying places? Yeah, we'll soon find out. Sayas Kakibara already going well today. She's right there on the inside next to Laura Smulders, but she's going to have to get a superb start if she wants to keep the Dutch rider from uh, breaking through and being out in front. 
So let's have a look now. Semi-final number one oh, of the Women Elite heading down the hill. Says Kakibara going well into the first turn. Is she going to pick up the whole shot? Yes, she is. Molly Simpson right there next to her. Laura Smulders working away. Oh, Lauren Reynolds, I think, has hit the deck. The Australian's gone down in a heap in turn number one. Payne right now are in there as well. And it's Simpson in three. Who's going to get the four? Meryl Smulders of the Netherlands working away into a top four position. But look at the rider from Australia. Sayers her Kakibara out in front and in control. I've got a feeling she's going to be right up there in the final later on and uh, here she comes down the straight she's going to take the win Laura Smulders is going to get the two Molly Simpson in three Meryl Smulders in for Lauren Reynolds wondering what of might might have been as she ended up on the deck I think with Peyton Ragnar in turn number one well this track definitely sort of the riders out not just by the fastest race at times but also just by the ability to finish without an incident and uh, it's a really old hackneyed phrase and saying it's the, the classic cliches uh, to finish first first you've got to finish yeah but it's proving difficult to get all the riders through without an incident but that's bmx racing isn't it Rich? yeah absolutely and laura just tacked that jump into the first turn that held down you saw lauren reynolds hitting the deck there in the top of the screen but it was the other australian rider say us a cap Barra. she's been absolutely on it all day long looking really relaxed off track maybe she knows something that the rest of the class don't know about but uh, yeah Laura in there in two Molly Simpson consistent as ever she's in there in three and Meryl Smulders will be delighted to be joining her sister in the final of round three of the UCI BMX Racing World Cup I think uh, delight is definitely going to be the word. I mean, the pair of them, they've been absolutely thrilling. You can see their influence here. You can see that Laura Schmoll is going through with Meryl Schmoll in second and fourth place, respectively. Sandwiched in between was Molly Simpson in third, but heading them up was Kakibara of Australia. So they're the four riders that will go through to our finals. And... Uh, we just saw before the quarterfinals and the semi-finals here, really the result of that inspirational ride in those rides coming through because we had a fantastic race on here with our youngsters, didn't we, earlier on? And that was great to see. Yeah, Papendal Challenge Cup was uh, absolutely superb, giving our younger riders a taste of what it could be like at the World Cup level. As we look at uh, semi-final number two, Mariana Pahong, Zoe Clayson, Augustina Cavalli, Martin Beanstone, Nady Neverhar, Bethany Schriever, in there as well, and uh, okay. Megan Kelstrup and Zoe Clayson. Okay, so the ride is sort of ready, they're going to be going up off very shortly. Rush takes through the action. Yeah, got my eye on gates one and eight. Mariana Pahon and Felicia Stansel heading down towards that first turn. Bethany's been squeezed in the middle. Is she going to have enough room to work away? And she can't jump the triple, but she's inside the top four. Manon Beastra diving underneath. Bethany Schriever back there in fifth now, being pushed to six by Maylin Kelstrup. So the great Britain rider has got it all to do, and it looks like she's been caught up in the pack. But Zoe Clayson is the rider out front now for Switzerland. It's Clayson's Stansel, Pahon. Feenstra, that's your one, two, three, and four. Malin Kelstrup in five. Bethany Schriever back there in seven. So it looks like her day is over. But Zoe Clayson of Switzerland, she's going to take the win in this semi final. Felicia Stantel for two. Mariana Pahon for three. And Malin Kelstrup leaving it late, but looking great as she came across the line for four. Well, she's going to be really pleased with that. You could just see that rider there Lina. by Clayson. Absolutely nice, nice. Really kept her out of trouble. But that start. So many riders coming into that. For somebody no, who's maybe new to the sport, as you come down that ramp, you're hitting what 40 mile an hour in a couple of seconds, yeah. really, really quick. You've got to be able to get clear and get out of trouble. And then once that squeeze comes off, somebody's going to lose out. And this time, All right, so there's your you see that was uh, Bethany Schreiber, who's going to go through eight places. She's not going to make it through to our finals. No, but she'll go back and she'll discuss it with uh, Coach Marcus Bloomfield, and they'll come up with a plan for round four and I'm sure they'll be back on it. So let's have a see what happened. I think Bethany just tagged that jump, didn't quite get the momentum that she needed and uh, got squeezed by Zoe Clayson's Felicia Stansel coming across from the outside and then Manon Veenstra diving underneath. And once you're back outside the top four, it's tough in anybody's book, but certainly in the semi-finals of an elite World Cup, well, it's going to be tough stuff for anybody to deal with. And uh, Bethany Schriever of Great Britain's going to have to come back, fight another day, but the riders who don't include Maylin Kelstrup of Denmark. She took that fourth position and she's in the World Cup final. And the times are pretty quick on them. We're talking sub 35 second here, Rich, on this track. Really flying around here. And that's a fast old time. Yeah, it is. Very much so. And uh, they'll just get faster as the day progresses. And uh, I'm expecting big things from these riders in the final. And I think that time will come tumbling down yet again. So you just see the runners just with the uh, long seat pin there. We've seen them riding around. Just uh, for anybody who's not been to the venue, the runners take the seat pin out, putting on the longer seat pin, and that's to 
basically change the position on the bike. Yeah, just to uh, spin those legs, get the lactic acid out of there and just aid in the recovery. And then put the normal seat in, normal seat in for when they're up on the gate and ready for uh, the race. Absolutely. So we move on to uh, many elites lining up semi-final number one. Of the peel out of France, Dave Vandenberg of the Netherlands, Silver Andre also of France, Isaac Kennedy of Australia. France have got Ro Ro Romain Racine, Mitchell Shopman and Justin Kimmon and Nick Kimmon, the Netherlands trio on the outside. Oh, will it be uh, home joy on the stands here today in round of that final turn? Uh, the crowd are looking on, we're watching, let's see what happens. Okay, semi-final number one underway for the men elite. Neat Kimmon from the outside, and if his brother Justin joins him in the final, I think the roof would come off this stadium if we actually had one, but the rider leading it out right now. Looks like uh, the French rider, I think it is, going through, and it's going to be Roman Racine. No, sorry, Arthur Pilard in there in one, Sylvain Andre in two, uh, Neat Kimmon in three. So, it is French domination in this semi-final. Pilard looking good, he's in control right now. Sylvain Andre following him down to the corner. In and out they go, Kimmon looking. Oh, who's been made in the final corner? And one rider goes over the top of the turn. It is Pilar Kimmons, uh, Andre, one, two, and three. And I've got a feeling Dave Vandenberg was in the mix with Mitchell Shotman there. And it was Justin Kimmon who went over the final turn. Let's hope he's okay. Isaac Kennedy rolling across the line as well. He's going to have to come back for round number four. But it got all mixed up there. And the question is has Dave Vandenberg got back into a World Cup main? We'll soon uh, find out so you can just see uh, I think that's more disappointment than uh, pain as he comes back onto the bike he was uh, nearly in touch but then over the uh, top and uh, the pads uh, doing the business but he's waving to the crowd here getting a lot of applause and uh, great to see made of tough stuff our riders yeah absolutely and uh, Pilar was out in front Kimmon looking good in that third spot Sylvan Andre right in the mix as well oh Liam Phillips there totally caught up in the moment as he came into the final corner that's when Justin went over the turn and that allowed I think it was Dave Vandenberg to dive back underneath and now uh, you just see Justin Kimmon exiting in the background so it was Pilar Kimmon Andre who got that final qualifying spot we'll have to wait for the official results well, the uh, results on the way in, and Liam Phillips, a real legend of the uh, sport, a man who, uh, for the uh, keen fans, that will need no introduction, but look at the split on those times between Vandenberg and a shotman there. 7.76 and 7.79, fractions of a, a saga separating these riders. It was tight. I'm not surprised you couldn't spot that, Rich. Yeah. Delighted to see Dave Vandenberg in the World Cup final, though. He's had a rough two years. Anyway, moving on. Semi-final number two, Cedric Booty, Diego Arboleda, Renault Blanc, Roman Mayu, Magnus Dyer, Matteo Carmona Garcia, Jeremy Rencarel, and the little magician right there on the outside, Carlos Ramirez. So our riders lined and ready. Will it be magic today for Ramirez? There you go. Cliche number 99, I think. Here we go. Riders ready to go. Let's have a look down the hill and it looked like the French rider got a really good one from gate number seven but it's Romain Mayu who's going to lead him into that first turn, Arboleda in there as well, where is Cedric Booty, he's outside the top four at the moment I think, but out front looking good, the winner of round number one and hit the podium as well in round number two, it is Romain Mayu of France, he took a win here just 12 months ago so he knows how to win on this track, Mayu, Arboleda, one and two and it's France three, Colombia four so it's all France and South America in this one but the man who's going to take it to the line Roman Mayu of France taking it to the stripe Arboleda in two Jeremy Rencarel in three and Ramirez right in the mix yet again well that's gone to a photo of finish I think from position two down to five I saw their flick across our oh, screen I'm not surprised that came in very very close indeed with a big charge down the sudden if you carry the momentum off the berm if you've got that height you've got the speed you're carrying the momentum through you can take so much speed through but you've got to have clear track yeah sometimes you've got the ability to go high and dive down but every time you do that you just run the risk of somebody like Carlos Ramirez diving underneath you and stealing that position away so yeah it's uh, you know you've got a lot of decisions to make in a very very short space of time but one man who didn't have to make decisions was Roman Mayu because he was just busy taking the win as Vincent Pelloward looked on and uh, there he went across the line and it was a case of who got that fourth spot Renkerel knew he was safe in three 
Well, I think if uh, Rich had any fingernails left after Christie's BMX time and time again, he'd be uh, biting them at the moment. See who is going to make it through here. They come here are the results. And uh, there we go. Uh, the man who sneaked in was uh, Ramirez uh, in uh, fourth place. I think we've got uh, a happy Rich that his predictions are coming uh, true, that uh, he, we're seeing uh, the technique. And that's all part of BMX. It's part of getting it right. It's getting that technique right. It's not just about pure power. It's not just about pure speed. And you've got to also play the taxis to suit you. And we've seen different riders. I mean, we've got some really big riders here. We've got some smaller riders with a low center of gravity. We've got people who are good on the turns and just straight pure power out from the start, Rich. And does this track favor anyone in particular, do you think? Do you know what? I think you've just got to be flat out fast. It's as simple as that, you know. <laughs> Don't overanalyze if, if, it. If you've got some serious track skills and you can make it work in the turns, definitely. But this track here at Papendal is all about speed. Well, it's not going to be long before we're on with our finals and uh, we are going to be uh, kicking them off with our under 23. So, Rich, we talk a little bit about uh, qualification for the World Championships. Give us a really quick overview of that. Yeah, it's all about, you know, nations' rankings, and uh, you've got to uh, really rack up those points for your nation. And, uh, yeah, it goes all the way through the year, and uh, you're winning those uh, points, and uh, it basically gives you a quota of how many riders that you can actually take to the World Championship. So the top ranked countries can take up to five and then lower down the order, it goes down as low as two. And then if you're outside of the top 23, then you just take one rider. And some riders, the top eight, are actually pre-qualified as well. So a nation like France could take one pre-qualified and five selected riders as well. So they can take as many as six. But key point is all these World Cups, Euro Cups, all that kind of stuff, get nation ranking points. That is what you need to get those quarter places for your country. But that doesn't mean if you've raced, you're necessarily guaranteed one of those slots, are you? No, you've got to be picked by your country. So you've got your uh, your own federation to kind of deal with as well. And you've got to be good enough to be picked. And they've got to think that you're medal worthy. And hopefully that will be enough to get you to the World Championships. And for some nations, I guess that's going to be easier to get picked than others. So if you're in a nation like, uh, I know we've mentioned a lot of times, France, got lots of riders. They've got lots of slots, but still not enough. Whereas other countries maybe would struggle to fill their slots. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, France, the Netherlands, they've just got, you know, an embarrassment of riches when it comes to BMX racing. And they've got, you know, they could field a half a dozen really good riders on any given day. You could mix them up all the time. But uh, yeah, there's other nations where, you know, they're just going to be sending everybody that they've got and just taking advantage of those places. And this is all about getting qualified for the World Championships. Yeah. Initially, that's Glasgow, but in the distance further away, you've got qualification for Paris, which is much the same thing. Yeah, much the same thing. And, you know, you've got all of the 2023 season and 2024 up to the end of June. I think it is there or thereabouts to rack up those uh, qualifying spots, all those qualifying points for the Olympics in Paris. And everybody's going to be looking forward to that. Well, we're looking forward to our riders making it to the top of the steps. And this part of uh, the uh, Delhi, it's, it's no lift at the back. There's no ramp up to the top of this. I mean, my local BMX track um, out in Chesterfield, I, I can ride to the top of it. It's nice. It's really nice roll up, but it's nowhere near as big as this. You and I were on the top of this and walking up and down. It is absolutely huge. And the TV, like anything, doesn't do justice to that and to the uh, jumps on the track and the steepness of the face as you come into them. A lot of people are used to riding a mountain bike and we're going down to the local park but this is a really tough track isn't it and those jumps launch you if you hit them hard you're going to go a long way yeah absolutely and like you said at the top of that eight meter start till you look over the top and it's literally like a roller coaster but like you're dropping off the top you hit 40 miles an hour within about two seconds and uh, yeah it's just you know hang on keep going and uh, hopefully get across the line as we move on to the uh, under 23 women and at the final the band is just getting themselves set and ready and the track maintenance crew doing their thing with the hose pipes keeping this track in absolute tip-top condition and i have to say matt they've done such a wonderful job today well we expected great things from Papandale. we've already had that i think uh, i don't want to uh, curse it but if it keeps going like this we're going to see some great actions come through our fans and of course we've got our next round from Papandale coming up uh, so well but uh, great racing already yeah, some great racing, but not without its action, as uh, those two riders found out, and Tessa Martinez had no such problems as she rolled across the line. I think that was in the quarterfinal. Michelle Vissing was looking good as well, and as uh, they went into the corner, the Ava Corley was uh, in the mix, and uh, we can't forget uh, 
any of these riders they've done such a good job Emily Hutt was right up there as well she's made her, her way into the final here at women under 23 level today so she'll be looking for a big result and uh, yeah all action all the time and that was Emily Hutt just leaving the gate there and there she is on the inside and she was battling with uh, Veronica Stariska at that point one rider about to exit left one about to exit right meanwhile Emily just checking up, knowing that she was safe there behind Veronica. As we moved on to the men under 23. Callum Russell of Great Britain in the middle. Trying his best to work his way through, but that one didn't work out. Jesse Asmus of uh, Australia, resplendent on that pink bike. That's how we pick him out. Maurizio Molina of Chile. They're in that second spot. Chasing down Rico Beerman. Those two guys will be battling in the main event a little bit later. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready for the final four so we, uh, races to the action. of the afternoon. The some parasols definitely final. doing their job for men our crowd within the stand. And there is the start list for the women under 23 final. Veronica Stariska, Michelle Vissing, Ava Corley, Tessa Martinez, Emily Hunt, Francesca Cindelani, Isabella Lopez and Megan Williams of New And if you had to pick one rider for whom this would be the result so far of their career to get into the final. Is there anyone here that you would think is this is this is really important for them now to do it right this stage in their career? Yeah, I think there's two riders who were on the verge of making a breakthrough. Uh, Ava Corley of Team USA and Emily Hutt of Great Britain. One of those two riders could take the win today. That would certainly be uh, the rider that would the uh, the win that would take them to the next level of confidence. Meanwhile, gate number eight on the 511 for Colombia, trying to stop those two riders is Isabella Carranza Lopez. Next door on the 505 for New Zealand, Megan Williams. Lane six from Great Britain, one of the riders to look out for on that 519 plate. It is Emily Hutt. Lane five from Italy, being uh, very, very consistent in this age group. Italy, that is Francesca Singolani. On her inside, number four, on the 500, took a win. Tessa and uh, Turkey, that is uh, Tessa Martinez of France. And the other of the riders to look out for in gate number three. On the 5319 USA, she's excited, it's Ava Corley. Well, certainly somebody who's going to be up there in the mix for the Netherlands on the 5-0-2, Michel Vissing. The inside on the final one. 10. Mm. Out of Latvia, last year's World Cup champion in this age group, Latvia. it's Veronica Storiska. So the women under 23 final here at round three of the UCI BMX Racing World Cup in Papendal, the Netherlands. It's nearly go time, let's see who's going to end up on that podium. So the time, the, uh, everything's done. It's all about getting across. This is that moment where getting across that final all line for the final time is the most important thing. Get in first place. Let's see who's going to do this. Can we see all oh, riders who's going to get the foxy start down for the top? Yeah, let's have a look. Riders are leaving the gate. Emily Hills of Great Britain has got a good start. Stariska on the inside as well. And that looks like Tessa Martinez in the minute uh, in the middle. And it is Stariska who's leading them into the corner. One rider's hit the deck. That is single army of Italy. She's not even made it around the first turn. Emily Hutt inside the top three, but getting shuffled backwards right now. But it's the Latvian Stariska out in front. Tessa Martinez in there in two, Megan Williams of New Zealand in three, and that looks like Lopez of Colombia in four, battling away with Emily Hutt, but as they go in and out the final corner, Stariska of Latvia, she's going to take the win, round three of the UCI BMX Racing World Cup, Tessa Martinez, another podium, she's in there in two, Megan Williams all smiling in three, Emily Hutt rounding out the top four. Wow, what a race, and again, action packed from the word go, that uh, first corner, seeing riders get ejected out, but you can see the elation on the riders' face, and great to see the riders congratulating each other, and that's part of being part of the BMX family, isn't it? The riders are all there looking after each other, and it's great to see the congratulations going around. It's a really tight-knit community at the top of the sport. Absolutely, it's a tight-knit community, and everybody, you know, just relieved to be across that line. If you've got a podium, so much the better, but as we go back to the replay, you can see Stariska didn't really get the start that she wanted but that first pedal but uh, she had some uh, you know trouble as she came down the hill but she certainly pulled it back and it was Ava Corley who also went down in that first turn so there was all action before they even got around the first corner Stariska just pulling out the lead Tessa Martinez in the in two 
But Stariska, the World Cup champion in this category, picking up where she left off. Megan Williams will be delighted with the third spot. Emily Hutt, after that big crash in Turkey, she'll be excited to be inside the top four. And Singalani, dreaming of what might have been. She'll be back, though, for round number four here at Papendal in the Netherlands. That's going to be the case for Cordy as well, because she came out from, I think, it was third place when she came down on that turn. So let's get the final set results. First of all, Stariska taking top spot from Martinez, and then Williams in third place, her in fourth. And then it's going to be Lopez in fifth, Vissing in sixth, Cordy in seventh, and Singalani in eighth position, not finishing the race, but walking off the track and... Uh, safe ready to race again so i think we've uh, we'll be able to hear from oh, well, let's see whether that emotion has made its way down to the podium monica many congratulations uh, first world cup win of the season just tell us what was key to that victory tonight yeah it's just the first win of the year and uh this track is amazing it's a, it's, it's speed and uh the jumps are big and it's technical and i like it and and I showed you that. When you're on the, the start gate there and you're waiting to drop and you're up against someone like Tessa Martinez, who's won the last two in a row, what's going through your mind? Are you thinking how you're going to get out front early? What's going through your mind? I'm just focusing on myself because I know I can win. I won last year and uh, this year is my first win and let's keep going. Many congratulations. Thank you very much, Martina. Thank you. Well, going to be a, a very happy rider and take that confidence from taking the win on to our next round. But another rider, I think, who did really well, you've got to say, it is Martinez there uh, coming in in second place. Another podium, you can see her behind here, just uh, not quite getting that last jump right, just landing on the top there, but uh, managing to make sure she came in in second place. But no uh, heading our rider taking the win there today rich well yeah definitely consistency i think is the word for tessa martin as you know a couple of wins and uh and the second place in round number three that's certainly going to be what the results that she was dreaming of at the beginning of the season so the uh, crowd just uh, taking in the sunshine as the uh, festival gets into full swing behind the grandstand and the riders all already so let's get our riders up and let's uh, see those three riders that made it on to our podium receive right, their flowers so Megan Williams uh, making her way up in uh, to that third place in spot. Second place and from France, the uh, Tessa customary flowers of the New Zealand rider in third. In second place, well, it's going to be a big points haul again today at the end of round three for Tessa Martinez. Team second, but not the top spot. That is reserved for this rider, Rich. Great ride. Yeah, Veronica Sariska of Latvia putting a superb performance in, taking that World Cup win. She's going to be happy with that one. That's a great way to kind of, you know, start your World Cup season. Solid, all smiles on the podium. Veronica Sariska, Tessa Martinez, Megan Williams, one, two, and three. And well, those smiles are bright enough to light up a spot. Well, I think as bright as the sunshine that's blazing down on us here at round number three. And they're going to get ready to. Uh, Race yep. again. Remember, we've got round right. number four coming up very quickly, and that means that the riders have to get the recovery. They're going to be uh, putting down the uh, recovery drinks and the uh, the really sort of you know absolutely bang up to date uh, recovery drinks, etc. Because that makes such a difference, doesn't it? You can get racing quicker. Yeah, absolutely. Because when you finish round three, like you say, round four comes up on you really, really quickly. So you've got to go away. You've got to put your recovery protocols in place and uh, be fully prepared for that next round and cool down as well. And and obviously the riders who are on the podiums. The top riders they have more duties and they can't go straight back to the team tents they're going to be in here they're going to be uh, going uh, through and uh, we're going to be uh, seeing the interviews and so on behind the scenes so they don't get as much a chance they can't recover quite as quickly but uh, they also get the chance to watch our next riders in action yeah and the next riders in action are the men under 23 here is your finals list for Rico Beer and Tim Goosens, Maurizio Molina, Casper Peepers, Matteo Colson, Alexis Pikanowski, Bart Van Bevelen and Jesse Asmus from Australia making his first World Cup final. There he is on the 529 lining up in gate number eight for the Netherlands left it late in the semi-final but he's where he needs to be now that is Bart Van Bevelen. 
on the uh, 549 out of Australia, making his first World Cup final, Jesse Asmus. On the 511, I think this is a rider to watch in this under 23 final out of France, Alexis Pikanowski. But he's going to have his work cut out with the rider next to him on the 515 in gate number five, also from France, Matteo Colsonet. The Dutch fans will be going wild for the rider in gate number four. That's Casper Pipas. The 509 out of Chile put in a great performance at the 2022 World Championships in France. That's Maurizio Molina. And more home support incoming for the rider in gate number two on the 508 team. But right there on the inside, on the 500, gate number one, two from two in Turkey. It's Rico Beerman. So the tension builds, the riders are ready. Time to go racing. To see who's going to take away top spot. It's all about this last run down from this start gate. Will they beat Beerman okay. today? Yep, I've got my eye on Beerman and also on Pikanowski. Ryder is ready. Watch the gate. So will Rico Beerman make it three from three? We are about to find out, and it looks like it's going well for him so far as he heads towards turn number one to pick up the whole shot. Rico Beerman from New Zealand. Matteo Colsney in there in two. Tim Goosen's in three. Jesse Asmus of Australia always been shoved out to the outside, and his lap is over. But Beerman making a mistake now and allowing Colsney right up next to him. Colsney going around the outside. Now diving underneath is Colsney and Beerman down the straight. Beerman just getting himself back into control. Here comes Tim Goosen for that third spot. Is he going to be able to make a move in the final corner? Casper Peepers in four, but Beerman looking to make it three for three. Colson A with the late charge, he got it on the line. Oh, Colson A by 0.192. He left it so, so late, but he timed it absolutely perfectly. How did he do that? What a turn around there. I think he was pressured coming in to the penultimate turn. You saw it coming, diving down. He went high, he went low. He's looking for a way round. And eventually, it was only in that final straight. I think that presence of mind to be able to take that. But what is Berman going to think? I mean, he must have lost that in the last 10 centimetres of the track. Yeah, absolutely. It came right down to the very, very end. I was preparing to say Rico Berman makes it three for three. <laughs> and then Matteo Colsonier went, no, we're not having any of that. That one's going to be mine. But yeah, having a quick look. I mean, Rico Beerman got an absolutely superb start, but uh, I think he tagged this particular jump. Yep, just got it and just lost that little bit of momentum, which allowed Colson A to try and work his way around. Beerman uh, went underneath and Colson A dived in again, and he still had two bike lengths, I think, at this point as they came into the final corner. And Colson A just lined it up, sneaked up behind him, got to the line, and just nicked it away, literally with inches to spare. Well, that's how we've called it. I'm just getting a call over the your radio saying it may have gone to a photo finish and it may yet be a reverse so we need to wait for these results we knew it was close i mean it was absolutely too close to call there rich you got it as calls today coming in over the line the timing said but it's gone back by the sounds of it to a photo finish and it could well be that it's been overturned i don't think they know who's got it yet they're no, both sat down there do. well we'll leave it to uh you know our race commissaires to sort it out. Matteo Colson is looking decidedly confused at the moment. <laughs> Rico Beerman's just waiting for the results. And here they come in and out the final turn. I'd be really interested to see how close this was. Tim Goosens was looking good in three. Casper Peepers in four. Molina in five. Here we go as they got to the stripe. Stretching for the line. No, it's oh, Beerman, surely. I think Beerman oh. did actually get it. But I we'll think he hit the, the line. Ooh, yeah, he hit the line first, but he wasn't the fastest. Well, you could see off. <sighs> I might change my mind now. Yeah, well, he coming in at, at higher speed, wasn't he? Yeah, I just went for the time that was in front of me on the screen. So, uh, <laughs> But, you know, that's the reason we've got uh, photo finishes, time and scoring. We've got to get these things right. It's far too important to get it wrong. So we will wait for the official result. And the uh, cameras they use, it's not the same as you're watching as we're watching on our screens. And it's a much better view bang on the line, unlike our view out of the commentary box. Now, it looks like they're leaning... Uh, Lining up, but Nico Berman hit. Here we go. Is this where they get it confirmed? Yeah, yep, looks like it. the handshake. Well, I never. There you go. It's been overturned. The uh, electronic time has been overturned by the photo finish. And that camera, I mean, it splits it right down. I mean, you can see 
tire width on there, can't you? And look at that. It's actually come through with it reversed. And not only has it been reversed, it's been substantially reversed there. Yeah, I've got a feeling that gap might be about 0.192. So, uh, yeah, Rico Beeman <laughs> taking it. Matteo Colsone, he's got second. Rico Beeman, congratulations. That was really tight. Just talk us through it. Man, I got out really good and got coming down the second straight and made a few mistakes. And uh, Colsone caught up right at the finish and I thought he got it, but back to the photo finish and got it done. Is it fair to say it perhaps wasn't your best one of the day because you've been on top form all season? Yeah, I mean, it definitely wasn't my best lap of the day, but it doesn't matter. I got the job done and... Happy to do it for Mike today, a legend who we lost, and uh, yeah, we got it done. That's three out of three so far. Can you make it four out of four tomorrow? Hey, that's the goal. Yeah, try my best. Many congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, what a result for uh, Nico Beerman there. I mean, it came down to four actions. Yeah, it was that you. last push we into that. He up. held on for that. Colson now, oh, after the, being in there, Words looking like Beerman he had it, it not to be, but Beerman here. He set out, but that mistake cost him, and you can see Costa was just looking all the time for a way to go around. He's on the right-hand side here. He's going to go across to the left-hand side. He was all over that road. So yeah. let's have a uh, look at our riders. They're going to be lined up, and uh, let's have a look at Costa uh, reactions as he's uh, down. He's going to be getting his flowers down on the podium. Tim Goosens just uh, taking the third place flowers. In second and, uh, place from France. Making a podium, just trying to get his breath back. And a man who will be simultaneously delighted and probably slightly gutted that he's ended up in second place. Matteo Colsone from France. But a World Cup podium is always a good time. And your winner there. Three from three for Rico Beerman. So those are your top three, Rico Bean, Matteo Colsone, Tim Goosens. The top three in your men, under 23. Round three, <laughs> 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 World Cup here in yeah, Papandar. Now he's not, he's got Well, you've been waiting for that. It's three from three. Yeah. You were waiting for it, and uh, you were right. So uh, here we go. You just see this is that run over the uh, top with that little bit of a mistake coming in through. And look at Colsone, absolutely flying there. Yeah, he was, uh, he was definitely on uh, Rico Beerman looking for a way around, and unfortunately, it didn't quite work out for him today, but there's always round four. And there is your Women Elite final star list. Zoe Clayson, Seiya Sakakibara, Felicia Stansel, Mariana Pajon, Laura Smulders, Molly Simpson, Meryl Smulders, and Maylene Kelstrup. Got some seriously fast riders in this Women Elite final. And we are about to take to the top of the gate to introduce you to the riders. And it's been as much about making it through the previous rounds as it has been, the previous heats as it has been, about putting in a fast time here. Are you expecting more of the same or a cleaner run this time? Um, expecting more of the same, Matt. It's going to be a, a fast, fast final. And the rider out in gate eight who's going to be looking to win it is going to be Felicia Stansel. She's got the World Champions jersey on there. She's out in lane number eight. Lane number seven on the three from uh, the Netherlands. Gate number seven, Olympic bronze medalist. Meryl Smulders and the Queen Bee of BMX on the 100 play. Double Olympic champion Mariana Pajon. Gate number five on the 175 out of Denmark. Won the World Championship as number 23 last year. That is Maylin Kelstrup on the 44 play. Doing it for Canada. It's Molly Simpson. Lane number three on the 110, looking for yet another World Cup win. It's Laura Smulders. On the 77 out of Australia, she's been absolutely flying all day long. It's Seiya Sakakibara. And right there on the inside, on the two plate, the former European champion. It's Zoe Clayson from Switzerland. Well, Clay sensors look good, hasn't she? And she's got gate number one. It's normally the fastest gate. You prove that in rounds one and two. Not always been the case with the incidents we've had, but it proved to be the fastest gate in our finals. Everybody's ready. Our cameras there, cameras, iPads and phones all ready. You can see the riders lined up across. Remember, gate one on your right, gate eight on your left. The riders are ready to go.
Ryder is ready. Watch the gate. Oh, twitch there from Zoe Clayton as the gate was about to drop and it might have cost us here. Sakaki Bar is right in there as well. And Mariana Pajon right next to her heading towards turn number one. Looks like the Australian's going to pick up the whole shot. Laura Smulders diving underneath. So it's Sakaki Bar, Smulders, Pajon, Smulders in there as well. Meryl Smulders, so the Smulders sisters are looking for podiums here at the World Cup in their uh, home track at Papendal. But look at the rider out in front. Sia Sakaki Bara of Australia. She's been absolutely flying all day long. She's backing up a USA BMX Pro Series win with a World Cup win. Seiya Sakaki Bara. Oh, and look at the fist pump. Isn't she delighted? What a ride. Absolutely flew from that gate. She got the timing out of the gate, right, which was critical. We saw that there in one of the places. And then absolutely net and way out of trouble. She didn't need to worry about anybody else. She had time. She was relaxed as she came over the line there. Yeah, she's looked superb all day long. And she's now, she can't hold back the tears of the emotion anymore. She's worked so hard and so long for this as a capybara of Australia and she's pulled it out of the bag at the one of the most iconic venues in BMX here in Papendal taking that World Cup win. Wow. The phone call back home to dad's going to be an emotional one, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you something, it's a good job. She won't be putting 10 P's in, into the meter or uh, having to uh, pay on card because uh, with the uh, internet, uh, she can uh, take her time in telling him and uh, cry or she was. I'll tell you something, look at that. I think, uh, I think she can't quite believe she's still trying to suck in the oxygen as well. It's great to see the congratulations of the team around and all of the riders. But what a ride. I mean, she was looking great, but she's beaten. The two riders who are on their home track as well, and that takes a little bit extra, doesn't it? Because having the home track advantage should make a difference, and it didn't. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, right there at the top of the gate, say his uh, partner, Romain Mayu of France, he's going to be delighted to see his good lady take the win. So uh, that's going to give him extra motivation, I think, for the Many League final. But here, look at the replay. Sayers gate was just absolutely superb. And she held it all the way into turn one. She had Mariana Pajon just on her outside, just trying to uh, work her way in. Laura dived underneath. Merrill was in there in four at that point. But as they came towards the final turn, she had, like, what, two to three bite lengths on Laura Smulders, and that's no mean feat. Coming out of the turn, Merrill just settling into that third spot. Romain looking on. Quietly proud, I think, but Seiya taking it across the line. Congratulations, Seiya Sakakibara. So you can see the elite women's final results up on your screen. You can see that the two smallest in three and two, but your winner is Seiya Sakakibara, and we can hear from her now. Seiya, many congratulations. A second career World Cup win. Just tell us what went right for you out there. <sighs> Everything <laughs> looks like, but my, I can't even speak it. This win means so much more than just a little World Cup win. I mean, oh, like on Friday, I had such a bad training session that I went home and cried for like two hours. I don't know why. I think this track has good memories, but also a lot of bad with concussions. And I think just dealing with all those emotions, um, aside from the stresses of racing, was just really a lot. And I think I just broke down on, on Friday. and. I don't know what I was able to do, but I think I just kind of took one race at a time, literally just broke it down and just trusted myself completely. And I just can't believe it. Honestly, I can't believe it. Well, we could just see what it took out of you emotionally, physically. It's a long, hot day. Just tell us how much you've gone through today to get that win. Yeah, well, we had our first race at you know, 1 p.m. and we had a three hour, three and a half hour break just yeah, I think it's really important just to switch off. Um, I literally um, watched some Netflix in between and um, yeah, just kind of switch on again and straight into the quarters, which is really high pressure and just trying to keep, yeah, one lap at a time, literally it's so cliche, but that's all I had to do. If I thought about the final too quickly, I got too overwhelmed, you know, so I just try to keep myself calm and just follow the process. Saya, many congratulations. Well done. Back again tomorrow. Thank you. Well, what a head game she was playing. I mean, the highs and lows on the way through. And to be able to pull out a ride like this after basically going back to the hotel room and breaking down and to pull that outcome round, 
That must be a serious Netflix box set that she was watching on the way through. There must be something motivational. Yeah, whatever she's watching, I'm going to watch it as well <laughs> because that was a superb performance from Seiza Kakibara. But sometimes, you know, the dawn doesn't come until after the dark and the storm, and that's certainly what's happened. Like I said, she's gone through a lot with the concussions and everything else, and it's just brilliant to see her get back up there and win a World Cup. And it's all that his back history that's come in. And there's also the emotion, you know, you're not just in front of uh, the crowds, but you can see you're in front of uh, the rest of the riders as well. So let's see our three riders make their way up to the podium. All smiles on home turf here. Our two sisters either side. So I think uh, it is uh, going to be uh, our third place up with the flowers. First of all, Smolders sisters. Yeah, Meryl Smolders taking that uh, third position. And uh, Laura taking the second spot. And uh, the great thing about the uh, Women League, they're all smiles no matter what. And uh, everybody's happy up there. But certainly the rider happier than any other today. Seiya Sakakibara, winner of round three of the UCI BMX Racing World Cup here in Papendal. And it's going to take a while, I think, for her to stop smiling after that. Well, I hope she doesn't stop smiling for a long, long time. A well deserved and great race. Now, pulled it out absolutely faultlessly in that yes. final. <laughs> and now they're going to go reset, ready for, oh of course, our next like round. Also on the same track, will it be the same result? Please make sure you do tune in to find out. Will that smile be there? Will it be another great day at the office? Well, we will wait to find out. But the race is not over yet by any stretch of the imagination. She's going to be invested in the next race as well. Yeah, we've got uh, one round to go, or one race to go today. At uh, round three of the UCI BMX Racing World Cup. And it's the Men Elite Final. Well, the Men's Elite Final A star studied lineup with the home riders here as well. You can see them on your screen in front of you, and uh, Rich. I don't want to pin you down. One rider, give me one name, come on. It's got to be the hometown favourite from lane eight, Nick Kimmon. Uh, I still think Roman Mayo might just pull this out. We're going to see that very shortly in day. The riders have been uh, ready for their start. And uh, whilst they uh, get themselves ready for the finals, quick reminder, remember we are in the middle of the series. All these points counting towards the overall, and that's a way on the riders at the moment at the bottom. Right now, it's all about getting out of that gate. Yeah, and there is the man who's made a lane eight his own. The 3-1-3, listen to the crowd go wild for Nick Kimmon. Lane number seven on that 192 plate. He's had a difficult two years. It is absolutely fantastic to see him back in a World Cup main event. From the Netherlands, it's Dave Vandenberg. On the five plate, gate number six, 2019 world champion Sylvain Andre. And on the red plate, the 100, the series leader. He took the win here last year, 2022. Romain and Mayu. On the 278 from Colombia, the little magician, the Olympic bronze medalist, Carlos Ramirez. The rider who took a win in Glasgow in the World Cup in 2022 on that 219 plate. Gate number three, Jeremy Rencarel. For Colombia, gate number two, the winner of round one of the 2022 World Cup series, Diego Arboleda. Gate number one on the inside, on the 130, Arthur Pilard. Oh, Rich, really interesting uh, looking at the uh, comments coming through on the feed. It's split at the moment. We are both in the uh, running if uh, the comments are to be believed in and uh, people's predictions. But Pilar is also being tipped uh, by a number of the uh, people are watching. So let's see who's going to come out right. Will it be somebody making a bit of magic on the way through in the middle as well? Okay. Well, here we go. Final race of the day. Let's see who's going to take this out. Who will take away top spot? Who's going to maximise the points here at round number three? This is it. No more rehearsals. Okay, drops on the mini league final. Let's have a see who's going to win round number three of the UCI BMX Racing World Cup here in Papandal in the Netherlands. Looks like Kim's been squeezed out, and the man leading it through is Romain Mayu. 
of France looking to pick up where he left off last year. He had a superb performance here in Papandale in 2022. Arthur Pilar right behind him in that second spot. That looks like Diego Arboleda in there in three. Jeremy Rencarel inside the top five right now when Ramirez trying to work his way in as well. But in and out the final turn. Romain Mayu, but look at Arthur Pilar creeping up on him down the final street. Who's going to get it at the line? Pilar, Mayu to the stripe. I think Mayu got it. Pilar in there in two, Arba later in three, Sylvan Andre in four. And if I'm not mistaken, it's two wins for the power couple of modern BMX. Well, we will see because that showed it as a photo finish on there. Yeah, let's, um, not, let's not call Let's this. not judge anything yet until we get an official result. Well, listen, we've seen some amazing racing. We've seen, we've seen people slide out. We've seen people crash out. We've seen tangles. We've seen mistakes. We saw another issue on there. But it comes down to absolutely nail-biting finish. It is the literally the, the, the millimetre of rubber on the tyre, I think, separating these riders at the time. They don't know who's got this. Again, the French in the running, as you would expect. And it's going to come down to that photo finish. And that camera, it runs it through. The speed runs through. We're going to see, because it's either going to be Piad, I think, or Mayo, who's got that. I can't imagine it's, it's going to be anybody, but who will it be? Well, let's look at this run again. Yeah, let's wait for the official result. But it was a great start from Arthur Pilar in the lane number one. But it was all about Roman Mayu as he came out of that first turn. And he was the guy leading it out on the series leader's red plate. And he had about two bike lengths on Arthur Pilar at that point. And look at Seiya Sakakibara clinching the fist, jumping up and down, wondering. Uh, if Romain is actually going to take the win as well and as they came to the final corner you could see Pilar getting ever closer or oh, Ramirez tried to dive underneath and slid out in that final turn and here he was as they came to the strike Pilar getting closer and closer and closer Mayu and Pilar to the line waiting for the results well you can wait I think I know who that's going to be and I think it is going to be a very good day at the office yeah, for that, Mayu. That looked like Romain Mayu to me as well. <laughs> we will see. We await the official confirmation. We don't want to prejudge this. They're waiting. We're waiting. The crowd are waiting oh, yeah. here in Papandar. And as we all wait to see what it will be, he's looking up there. He's trying to uh, see if uh, he's going to get any heads up on who it will be. And uh, I think we're going to see the reaction down at trackside at first. I think it's going to be Mayo who's got it. You can see they're asking for the result. Come on, guys, tell us what it is. It's going to be nerve-wracking. Here we go. There we go. Official. Romain Mayu takes his uh, second World Cup win here at uh, Papadali. He won in 2022. Now he's done it in 2023. Arthur Pilar just behind him in that second spot. Diego Arboleda rounding out the top three. Well, <laughs> It's a great day for those two riders, both taking wins, looking very, very happy. I think there might be a glass of champagne or two, just consumed very, very quickly. You think, I, I don't know about that, it's uh, it's it's going to interfere with the prep, and these, you know, they're absolutely flat. I mean, yes, they've got as many World Cup points in their house as some countries. Yeah. They struggled to get in several seasons, but they are going to be celebrating one way or another whether they let it interfere with tomorrow well we will see because of course we're going to be moving on to our next round very shortly indeed can't wait to get the reaction of our riders in the meantime of course this is round three we're only on round three we've got a lot of rounds still to go so it could all change and our early leaders in those uh, standings are likely to change aren't they? Because we've, we've got the world championships in between rounds we've got a lot of racing and we've got right Riders who are not here, people like uh, Kai not making his way in here injured. You've got other riders out. But I think we can hear from our race a winner. Let's see who was happiest in that household. Is it going to be him or her? Roman, congratulations. Another tight race today. What was the difference between you and your countryman after today? I think he was really good around the track. I had some some struggle down the third straight. I, I couldn't really find my rhythm and I knew it was fast there. So I tried to make a difference in the first half of the track. It was really tight at the end, but uh, I had no idea where he was. I knew there was someone. I didn't know if he was going to be left or right, but uh, it's a tight one, but at the end it's a win. So that's what matters. Can you please repeat that uh, answer in French for your French fans? Yes, it was a very, very serré with Arthur. He had been rapid all the journey. Il a eu beaucoup de vitesse sur la piste par rapport à moi, je trouve. 
J'ai dû essayer de faire la différence sur le, sur le début de piste et, et après essayer de le maintenir. Il est arrivé en dernière ligne, je ne savais pas où il était. Mais voilà, au final, je... c'est peut-être à rien, mais c'est quand même une victoire et, euh, et une bonne journée. And how special has this win been today? Because Saya, your girlfriend, also won in the women's elite. That was actually crazy. I, I tried to like keep it together on the gate because I could see I saw the whole thing. But uh, I'm just so proud of her because she's been through a lot, and seeing her win, winning today means means a lot to me and as much as it means to her. I think. Roman, thank you very much. Congratulations again. Thank you. Well, great to hear, and uh, great to hear he was uh, struggling to shut out uh, the previous win, and that one was elite final. But uh, let's not take anything away from him. It's a track he's won on before. It's a track he has come back and won on again, and he was looking good, really. Uh, yet you wouldn't have necessarily said he was the on-form rider. And Kimmon, what happened to Kimmon on the way through there? Yeah, it just didn't quite work for him from lane number eight. You know, he's always got the power to, to win here at Papendal, but when you've got seven riders like that inside of you, you know, you've got to have an absolutely perfect start to get over from lane number eight. It just didn't quite happen for him. But uh, yeah, Roman Mia, you like to say, he put on a masterclass here last year in 2022. But Pilad was so, so close as they got to the line and he threw the bike, it just wasn't quite enough. But uh, yeah, smiles and delight all round for Sayer and Romain, congratulations. Yeah, fantastic See, and I think we're gonna see our top three riders in that men's elite up on that podium and receiving their flows, which no doubt will be making their way around, although uh, I think uh, it's gonna be the mechanics gonna be getting some of the flowers today, which is quite traditional to uh, give them to the team or the helpers as well, isn't it, across Thank the uh, sport. So third place today for it's Columbia. Yep. Always a good time to see a Colombian on the podium. Arthur Pilard in the in that second spot. And in the first place, from France, he does it again. Roman Mayu. I'm thinking he likes Papendal as a track now. <laughs> you, might be, you never know, he might be uh, sitting up home uh, and camping on this race at this rate. Uh, great to see our riders in there. Uh, Arbolader taking uh, third place, Pilar taking second, and Amir taking away top spot. And, uh, well, for all the way in, and uh, staying clear of the trouble, and uh, even when they had sliding out underneath them. These three riders kept ahead and kept it clean on the way down to the finish. So. That's all the points that are going to be calculated for our standings. It's going to mean, I think, that our riders who have set the running early on are going to continue that. Uh, we're just waiting for those to be calculated. Really looking forward to see how they've gone. And we've talked about it's been a fast track as well. So uh, we're going to be looking at that now. Let's have a look at the standings. No surprises. Tessa Martinez extending that lean to Bert Stariska in second place. Five points clear of Williams. That's nothing. No, it's very, very close in terms of uh, the overall standings. Tessa Martinez, picture of consistency. Two wins in a second spot, you can't really argue with that one, but uh, Veronica Storisco will be giving her some serious competition for the rest of the season. Rico Beerman leading out the standings in men under 23. Hugo Marslek still settled there in uh, second, but there's a big gap between one and two. Goosen's into the top three. Uh, Spencer Cole, Matteo Colsone rounded out the top five. Casper uh, Peepers of the Netherlands back down there in seven with a bit of work to do. So moving on to our elite, so we uh, can see at the top that Schreiber just holding on there, 100 uh, points, just under 100 points from Smolders, who's moved up, but uh, chasing closely behind today's so winner, Sai Sakibara, moving in to that third spot, just clear of fourth place of Molly Simpson. So the uh, women's elite standings still pretty close, and two rounders starting to get a little bit of a gap at the top. However, in the uh, men's standings, it's slightly different in the elite men's competition. Roman Mayu, that's some points haul now, and it's Arbolid who took third place today in second. Yep, yeah, so uh, Yoris Dodi rounding out the top three there. Arthur Pilar moving himself up in the standings to fourth. Nick Kimmon still in touch inside the top five. Isaac Kennedy didn't quite make the main event today. He's in there in six. Sylvan Andre in seven. Matteo Carmona Garcia in eight. So great racing here, those standings will move on to round number four. We've seen great action here in round number three. And uh, it's been a pleasure putting words to the action with uh, Rich here. And uh, Rich, we can catch up with you on the internet. Yep, yeah, uh, at BMX Commentator on Instagram. 
and you can catch up with me, it's uh, Matt Fix Payne. Don't forget, of course, uh, to uh, jump on board. And if you want to know any of the rules or follow any of the uh, racing on social media, it's the UCI BMX. But from Rich and myself, we'll see you again for round number four. Goodbye. Goodbye. Ik heb een voor voor de taal. Test, test. Mon français n'est pas très bon. Test, test, test. Mon français n'est pas très bon. Seems good. Seems good. <laughs>